Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome in the Most Underrated Podcast. You already know, broadcasting from Most Underrated Studios. I'm your man, Thomas the Franchise, the homie Dal Palantonio, chilling across from me, JJ Stringsteen, here at the end of the table. Oh, dude, I'm so pissed off right now. This is such a terrible way to start the show. I know you know it. uh, Welcome in. You guys don't know it. We're starting off the show with a huge one of these. We we have a new studio set up. I'm glad we don't have... uh, Instead of looking at the wood wallpaper, my man, Blake, you got some things to look at. There you go. <laughs> You're welcome. We worked very hard to throw this together for you so we wouldn't have to uh, make sh- so we can make sure your experience was good here. Yeah. Also, uh, I forgot the iPad in the process. I um, forgot the, what the hell is that thing called? The other camera we use? Oh, the DJ. Uh, the, the DJI. Osmo, the Osmo, Osmo Pocket. So I was going to use the Osmo Pocket to shoot some B-roll of the Travis Scott Jordan 1 lows today so I can get that video up for you guys later today. So we shot with that yesterday. It was dead all day at sneaker con or at a uh, thrift con. Mm-hmm. I take it home. I plug it in. I leave it at home. I'm already halfway here. Actually, I'm halfway to a Scent Eyes in Parker, mm-hmm. which is deep, deep, the deepest, deep in Parker. Deep so, cuts. <laughs> so my plan is to wake up and go down all the way down to Parker, then come back to Most Underrated Studios, which is not in Parker. It's back north. Right. So I go back up. I turn around, and or I'm coming down. I forget the Osmo. I'm like. All right, I'm not coming back this far north, so I need to go back and get it. Go get the Osmo. I come back down. I get the glasses fixed. I go see Thomas, Thomas at Ascent Eyes. I lost a screw in my glasses yesterday at ThriftCon. I put the screw back in. Everything seems to be going good. I get over here later than I wanted to get over here because I had forgotten that. We get this whole thing set up. I shoot the B-roll. We get things going. We're about to start the show. I can't even take that out on the way out because I have no mother fucking iPad. No iPad. How? What are we doing? Why would I? I don't even use the iPad other than I don't even know why that would be out of outside of my bag. I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying to think, was I charging it? I have no idea what's going on. Hmm. All I know is I don't have the iPad. So I apologize to everyone. Uh, the show is, we didn't, we didn't get to have all the sounds. Today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do the sounds. I'm going to have sounds. <laughs> we're going to have some sound clips, some sound bites yeah. for subjects we're talking about. We're not going to have any... Uh, we're not going to have anything funny. We're not, We're not going to have any below not good. Yeah, it's. I'm so disappointed, dude. I'm uh, so. I'm annoyed. I need to smoke some weed for it. Don't I worry, man. I want to cut the show off. I'm definitely I'm not so going to give you some fucking credit for real. Yeah, I know. You could just do it manually, Dal. I'm going to have to. <laughs> I think you, you sound just as good as the board. I'll do we it. don't even need the board. Uh, I'm going to do it for this What's cast. What's your best gunshot? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What are, <laughs> this is so bad. What are we doing? Dude, I'm so disappointed in myself. And you know me. Like, yeah. I'm very routine. So when things go. If I'm assuming things are going to be rolling one way and then shit just takes a hard left, I'm not good with adapting. I'm yeah. very bad on the fly with most things. Once in a while, which is why I don't have kids. I know I'm bad on the fly. Kids force you to do that. Yeah. Oh, we're going to just go do this all day and then you're going to just shit your pants in front of everyone in front of the store, which I wasn't expecting. No, I don't have time for that. You'd be one of the uh, the adults, the parents right. uh, that would leave their kid in the car. I'd be like, we got to go. I got to go. No, in the heat? No, hopefully not. I don't think so. We don't want that. I don't think I'd be that bad. No. Damn. But, um, yeah, I'm not good with shifting on the fly. Yeah. So. How about the weekends? I'm pretty disappointed. Uh, The weekend. The weekend. What the hell did I do this? I'm trying to think. Now I'm so rattled, dude. Really? I don't even know what we have going on for the show. Let me me run down the show for you guys and we'll go on the weekend. Uh, I like it. (laughs) You like that I'm rattled? You love that this is just... (laughs) Ready to go. Off the rails at the beginning of the show. The goat's going to have to take over the show. I know. I might have to switch seats. <laughs> I'm going to focus on sounds. I'm so annoyed. Stringer's going to have to guide us through the show. So mad at And myself. you're just going to have to just add whatever you can, whatever you can. Uh, Hit me with the rundown. All right, man. Um, we're gonna What's talk, happening? We're going to talk a couple different things. We went to ThriftCon over the weekend. We Had sure a lot did. of fun. We copped a lot of shit. I should be excited about that. Yeah. I'm going to be in a better mood in a minute. I we think got I'm gonna, a freaking rack back there. Dude, shit. are you excited about that? Or are you more excited that Stringer, a.k.a. the GOAT, String Steen, was able to join us instead oh, of yeah, going to that Vegas? Was, that was good. No, JJ did a great job. He got some footage. Battery died a little quicker yeah. than we would liked. Yeah, I filmed um, way too much. But, I feel like I could have taken a step back there. Yeah, but it was moment, learning, but, dog. Yeah. It was the first time you did it. You were so I expected to. I have never like used it to the point it would die. So Right. You were excited. It's, yeah. Right. I should be excited because we got this badass Marlboro freaking Ducati uh, shirt that yeah. I copped at the thrift yesterday. Yep. You got the really dope Michelob light tight yeah. tee on. Yeah. Really nice. It's pretty much a neon light on my chest. Exactly. Kind of like the Bronco it's light. Just like this one. Yes. Pretty sick. New background. 
looking good. So New we should be excited. We should be in a good. Actually, I think I guess I'm saying we. It's not like you guys are in a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood because I'm ruining the show. I just feel bad for everyone. I'm like, we don't have time for me to go all the way back and grab the thing. You got to work today. You still got a job. I got things going on today. <laughs> um, the show rundown. That's where we were going. Sorry. We're going to talk to, uh, so we obviously we went to ThriftCon yesterday. We're going to we're gonna take a look at all that stuff. We're going to go over the ThriftCon stuff. Mm-hmm. We're also going to go over some NFL preseason, some preseason games this weekend, kind of what you liked, what you saw, uh, what you were encouraged about. Also, Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. We got to go over this guy's story. This guy's returner for the Browns uh, scored a touchdown in Odell Beckham's cleats. Yep. Over the weekend, we're gonna go uh, talk about that story, and I have some sound from him that I want to play um, of him just talking about his story, and uh, it's very fascinating. I thought you guys would enjoy that, so we're gonna play that. Antonio Brown, we'll update you on that situation. Getting a little crazy. Really looking forward to Hard Knocks tomorrow night. Yeah, no doubt. We'll talk about all that. And then sneakers and fashion, we got a we got a couple. Dude, we have an underrated sneaker pickup yesterday for you. <laughs> and it's not the ones people saw on my story. I didn't, publi- I didn't publicize these at all. We kept these on the sneaks, you literally. Did, you did pick up the off-whites yesterday at ThriftCon, the off-white uh, Terra Kigers. Terra Kigers. Because you didn't to get a bigger size because you yeah. needed them. I didn't bring those into the... Yeah, we've yeah, already, yeah, seen, we, them. We already seen them. Yeah. It's fine. But you did pick up another pair of shoes. So we'll I take sure a look at those. Did. Also, the Jordan 1 Obsidians. I got those early. They come out the 31st. We'll take a look at those. How's the quality? All that stuff. And then your normal YouTube comments without the gunshots. Uh, so those of you that don't enjoy that, you might enjoy this show. Bummer. Um, weekends. I had actually a really good weekend. Me and my lady had a phenomenal weekend. Got so much done. Crushed it. Got a ton of stuff done for the cast. Got a ton of stuff just done overall for the weekend. Around the crib. Like, great weekend. We just killed it. Uh, until today, obviously today. Well, I guess it's not the weekend anymore. So, yeah, so I had a great weekend. Yeah, I had a really good weekend. Put together a vanity, a little makeup area. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, putting stuff together. Was it IKEA? Tooling. I was grilling. Yeah. Uh, no, it was not IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> then it yeah. was probably good experience, I know, dude. Yeah, because we started that thing at about ten thirty last night. Oh, oh geez. God. So if it was IKEA, oh, we wouldn't have got to bed till two. I'd have really been terrible today. Oh, that'd been the worst. So, um, but yeah, it was fun, man. A good weekend. Grilled quite a bit. Just try not to heat up the house. So we actually cooked ravioli on the grill, bro. Ravioli? Check it out. You grill up the, uh, we took a, we, uh, we got a cast iron skillet. You put it out on the grill. Sure. You throw your uh, Beyond Meat in there, brown it up while it's out on the grill because we don't want to heat the crib up. Yeah. AC has been on the fritz. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, AC has sure. been on the fritz. We ain't trying to heat up the crib. So we throw the Beyond Meat on the grill, cook it up inside the skillet, brown it all up. You saute the mushrooms, do all that stuff on the other side of the skillet. You're cooking it. You're killing it. Then you uh, add the sauce. Boom, you put you do the pasta sauce, you put the with the meat, all that stuff's good. You let that chill on one side. We have these um like grill grates, like these little things you put down. So you can put vegetables or whatever else on top of them. I have those as well. So yeah, yeah we just put those down, the, cook the ravioli on there, like five minutes each side. Money, dude. Sick. And then put the garlic bread up on the top rack. Damn. Just uh gar- little garlic bread there. Yeah. Fire. Cook the whole pretty- meal, dude. Whole whole Italian joint out on the grill. That sounds pretty tasty. It Not was. gonna lie. It was awesome. Oh, I was like, what's going on here? Someone pouring a beer? Yeah, we got, <laughs> we got beer. We got beer stuff all around us. But uh, Out for the homies. Um, so, yeah, that was my weekend, dude. Nice. Fun. Enjoyable. Had a, re- had a really good weekend, dude. Honestly, yeah. haven't had a uh, weekend. I don't know. Like, I just, I've been busy. Things haven't been going. It's just been a lot of rocky roads. So, this weekend was really, really good. And then it capped off with ThriftCon. Nice. So, yeah. What about you? Uh, Puppies. Good, yeah, pretty good weekend, man. Give little me an update. Little puppy update, right? So, uh, <laughs> pup date. Pup date. <laughs> <laughs> we need the breaking news like, yes, da, 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 pup date. I know. Instead of um, just getting chronic. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so here's the deal. So uh, on Friday, they were we had our first adoption event that we went to. So we were obligated. And by we, I met Robin because I was working, uh, was obligated to take these uh, four pups to an adoption event. Yeah. Uh, well, that being said, two of them. Got adopted that evening, so we're happy, right? It, it sucks to separate. Nice. It sucks yeah. to separate pups, man. I got a little emotional with it. <laughs> that not, <quick? laughs> not because I wanted oh. the pups. I'm just an animal. Were guy. you attached? But what you have to understand is, dogs are bred to be spread, you know, split up. Like that's they don't yeah. need to be with their moms right. and their brothers. And right. It's it's not how puppies are. But like for me, you know, big family guy. That means a lot to me. It's hard to see that, you know, because I watch these. I watch these puppies cuddle. You know, they had puppy cuddle. You know, sleep events, you know, they're sleeping on each, each other, laying, lounging on each other. Man, it's it's hard to see that. So Friday night, two of them got adopted. Great, great homes. We got to see the people that actually adopted them. We got to talk to them um, and then, you know, just kind of got to see this and, and, and just be happy for them. Going to great homes. 
Saturday, we wake up. Robin's like, do you want to go to the adoption event with me? I'm like, not really. I'm not really attached to these puppies. It was sad uh, seeing two go. Um, I don't really want to. She's like, are you sure? She gave me those eyes that say. Puppy eyes. You're going to go. Yeah, she gave you the puppies. <laughs> and I need you to go. Yep. And get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I went. I went. And this, I went. So this was, uh, this was at. Jerry. Uh, so the first uh, adoption was like at just kind of a mom pop, you know, uh, pet store, which was super cool. I love those kind of boutiques. Uh, this one was just a, you know, generic pet co. Um, and we got there, we took the pups there and they had them all separated into individual crates, right? Because you don't want to mix crates because some dogs have certain sicknesses and ailments and they're taking medications for certain things. You don't want to mix those, right? So you want to keep them separated. The litters that is. So we had them separated. You do. You do. So very, very important that, um, so I got to see them and dude, Petco was super busy. You just had wall to wall people in there. Uh, Sunday guy, yeah. No, it was Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Yeah, weekend, Saturday. Still yep. a weekend. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so super, super weekend, crazy. Yeah. And man, these dogs, man, just being held and talked to, so much stimulation, man. You just almost kind of feel bad. Dude, I had to walk out of Petco a couple times, man. Wow. Just, just overwhelming, dog. Too much for me. Wow. Man. I just, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm too sensitive when it comes to animals, man. No <laughs> doubt. But I eat the shit out of them. That's what's crazy. Like I love ground chuck. I love eating meat. Like I was raised as a farmer. Right. But, man, I just. Be I around. was thinking about that just now. I was thinking, wow, <laughs> like, this guy is such an animal lover. I'm yeah. so surprised. He's He's not like hypocritical. Yeah. yeah. How you're, you're not. Why am I not addicted to beyond meat? Why am right. I not, you know, doing all this? But I guess look at Ace Ventura. I mean, he was out when, on, when nature calls, remember he's out with the lions yeah. eating the zebra. Totally. He's, he's, a, <laughs> he's an animal lover too. Yeah, you know, I just watched that on TV the other night. That's why it popped in my head. Remember he's, he's got, he comes up and his mouth's just full of blood. <laughs> yeah. Lions are, just watching him. Yeah. <laughs> When he's out, right when he's out getting uh, the rhino, yeah, he's in that mechanical rhino. That's right. <laughs> oh, dude. Classic. So uh, yeah, I'm surprised that's not you. How are you're you're like Ace though? I'm surprised yeah. you eat meat though. I know it's surprising. I, I mean, I don't eat a lot of meat because Robin and I, you know, she doesn't she doesn't have a lot of meat around. Yeah, unfortunately, get on the Beyond train. I know we'll get there soon. Uh, I have some information on that someday. Maybe on un, un, under underrated news. Okay. I got something for that. On Beyond. But, Let's uh, talk about not it. specifically Beyond, but oh, just you in know, general, just the impossible, the impossible, whole, yeah. that whole thing. Yeah, so. Let's do it. Like um, it. that being said, so long story short, man, we, we, the other two were adopted, uh, middle, middle part through the day. So we're out of puppies. We have nice. no more puppies. Nice. Um, Robin and I had a long, deep conversation on the process. And fortunately it's, it's hard to say like, Hey, I don't want to do this again because dude, the, the litter of puppies that we had were awesome dude they didn't cry they didn't howl throughout the night they weren't stubborn um man they were some of the best puppy litters that i have ever seen dude or ever been affiliated with so it's tough to say to shoot robin down and be like look i don't want to do this again but there is a right time and place i think and right now is a little chaotic especially obviously looking at leaving the job you know, trying to find the exact data when to do that. Uh, the podcast still isn't really generating a lot of revenue quite yet, so uh, still pretty nervous about that. Um, and I know that the work ethic and all that stuff will end up paying uh, off, to but uh, uh, but Muzzy needs to buy my damn house. I, I think love that's, how we just all laugh. Yeah, that's what we need to do. So um, no more puppies, man. Uh, Robin really misses them, and uh, I will tell uh, everybody, like Zeppelin, our pup, is he misses them, so we kept one of their toys. And he just carries that around, oh. with them, the, you know, throughout the whole house. That's like, cool. Like, hey, I remember these sons of bitches that were here, but uh, <laughs> I got their toy. I'm the dominator, and now I got my house back. Nice. You know, so was he a little annoyed? I, th I don't think annoyed. He was very, very curious. Uh, but that being said, he was also kind of on edge the whole time, right? You got somebody new in your house, like. Who are these little kids? You know, it's just yeah. like, you know, if your um, if your sister brought, you know, her young niece, you know, you, your nieces and nephew to the house and they're there for three or four days. It's like, hey, I'm cool with this. This is fun. We're partying. But I'm also a little on edge because I got to I got to make sure that I'm sharp. I got to make sure that if there's an accident, if there's this, if, you know, somebody gets in a fight, I got to be ready to go. That's kind of how our dog felt. It seemed like, you know, nice. so now he's sleeping better. He's more relaxed and just not on edge. So, yeah, it's cool, man. And then ThriftCon, right? right? Great time on Sunday. Yep. So. Are all the puppies the same? Are they all the same breed, uh, same kind of, I don't even know what the hell I'm trying to say. Yeah, say, yeah they're all the same breed, breed um, yeah. because they're Jeez. all from the same litter, right? So same mother. Okay, gotcha. You know? gotcha. So yes. So um, you're not just getting random puppies from different, yeah. okay, yeah. all right, all right. Now you they're, can they're get random. Yeah, you can get random ones, oh, okay. but or you can get singles or doubles, And but we wanted the same litter, and we wanted the same kind of, you know, it, it just, 
I don't know why Robin chose that necessarily, um, but I think you do it based off of litters, based off experience, based off the house size. There's just a bunch of things, you know, that everybody takes into consideration. But, uh, but yeah, this was the same litter, and uh, dude, they were awesome. Nice. Were nice so. Well, while you're doing uh, all that this weekend, yeah, I'm watching SummerSlam last night. How was it, dude? I, I was a little disappointed. I man. saw Goldberg was back. So SummerSlam, they market it as the biggest party of the summer. It's supposed to be the WrestleMania of summer. Okay. It's been, they've been having it, um, or they had it in Canada last year. And it was in the same spot this year in Canada. Yeah. I'm trying to think last year. I don't really remember. Oh, do we have a fly in the studio? We have a fly in You're the studio. You're me right now. Oh, jeez. You don't know we're trying to do an award-winning podcast and they never won no fucking awards? Without no iPad? Dang it. I'm losing. Sorry, midsole. Without no iPad yeah. and no real sounds. We got that one. The Foo Fighters. Yes. All right. We got a little light laugh track. I know that's applause. I know that's weren't weren't. Some scary music. Pet Cemetery. Time Machine. Okay. And then Birds. And the birds. Those are what we got today. Those are the only sounds you have available. Gotcha. But anyways, I'm watching SummerSlam. Yeah. And uh, I felt like the crowd was a little bit li like light, not in attendance, but in voice. Like I just felt like they weren't as rowdy as they could have been for a SummerSlam. Okay. But the card wasn't great, so maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. You know, like. They, but it felt like. How soon do they announce the card? Do you? How how soon do you? There's know? a build, guys. So here's what okay. happens. Like in wrestling back in the day, and this is why people think some of the rest, like the, people think the business used to be better. Because you didn't have pay-per-views every month. There wasn't 12. There wasn't slammed together every single month. So you had more time for storylines to build, mm -hmm. and it felt the feuds felt more organic. Sure. So in wrestling, these are called feuds. The feuds pay off at each big event or pay-per-view. They're not really pay-per-views anymore because WWE has gone with the whole network mm -hmm. situation. You pay 10 bucks a month, you get access to all their content, all their network, and the pay-per-views. Mm -hmm. You can technically still buy the pay-per-view, but it's not... It's not the main thing anymore. Right. Most people have are just subscribed to the network for 10 bucks a month. Sure. But anyway, so they, they have a feud. They'll feud throughout the Monday Night Raws each week. Monday Night Raw, uh, Tuesday Night Smackdown, all that shit. Wrestlers will feud, and then that, that's what will build, or they'll have little whatever uh, tiffs throughout the weeks, backstage segments, things that will build the feud up, and then it will culminate at each pay-per-view. So I feel like the feuds that they had just were not were not that great, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I feel like the card ended up being not that great. It didn't feel big enough either. And what they did to make it feel big, they went and uh, they went and brought back Trish Stratus. Wow, Goldberg, saw Goldberg, some legendary wrestlers, right? So, and dude, hats off to Trish Stratus. She was out there. I think she's forty eight years old. She wow. did a phenomenal job, but she got her ass whipped. Dude. Huh. You go back and watch that match, and Charlotte Flair was just. Uh, Charlotte is just so good, dude. Yeah. She is. She makes me so proud every time I watch her wrestle because I'm like, that is. You could tell that's a Hall of Famer's jeans right there, dude. Yeah. You could tell that's Ric Flair's jeans in her. She is just so natural, dude. She's the most. She's the sickest wrestler, sports entertainer, entertainer that I've seen in a while. But everything from her promo skills to her mannerisms to what she does during the match. There was points in the match where the shit talking she was doing was just degrading to Trish Stratus. And then she's slapping her across the face so hard, dude, huh. and just dragging her around by her hair. And there's one point where she kicks her off the ring and Trish takes a nasty bump. Dude, I thought she might have broken her collarbone or separated her shoulder. But she ended up fin being able to finish the match. And like I said, hats off to her. She did a great job of getting her ass kicked. But it was it was rough, dude. It Not was good. rough at watching spots. Yeah. So you had that match, which, you know, it seemed, I don't know. I liked the premise. I liked that the... The old guard was trying to stick up for the old guard, and the new guard was saying, you guys are all shit, and mm -hmm. this is the new age kind of, you know, I like the old versus new age type thing. But what I hated was Goldberg. So Goldberg comes out. This is the worst part of the card. Goldberg comes out. He's going to wrestle Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler's an up-and-coming wrestler. I guess he's been in the business for 10 years, so you can't really call him up-and-coming, but I think they should give Dolph Ziggler a bigger push. I think he's one of the best wrestlers on the card. The guy sells like no other. Sells meaning he takes an ass-whooping too, makes it look incredibly realistic, and he puts the other guy he's wrestling over. If he's wrestling Samoa Joe, he makes him look like a million bucks. He makes mm. Samoa Joe look like a beast. He'll make whoever... He, just, he does a great job. Dolph, Dolph Ziggler's a great worker. I think he deser deserves to be elevated. So what happens? They bring Goldberg out to face Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler gets two super kicks in. The bell rings. It's almost like a UFC fight. The bell rings. 
Boom. He hits him with a super kick. Stuns uh, Goldberg. He gets, tells him to get up. Boom. Hits him with another super kick. Goldberg's down. Stunned. He tries to pin him again. Pin, tries to pin him twice. Goldberg kicks out. He gets up and tries to throw his third super kick. Goldberg catches it. Spears him. Or no. Uh, just He just spears him. Then he picks him up. Jack hammers him. Wins the match. I'm what? like, yeah, exactly. That's I'm like, it? this is the most ridiculous shit ever. So then I start to fast forward because I start the pay per view behind. <laughs> this annoys me even more. We're making dinner. I start to fast forward. The <laughs> Dolph Ziegler grabs the microphone as he's laying on the canvas and is like, starts talking shit to Goldberg. He's like, hey, you can't beat me. You can't beat me straight up. When he just beat him straight up, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so Goldberg comes back down to the ring, gives him another spear, and gives him like another. Beats him up again, like for a second. Gives him another spear. Then his music hits. He starts walking down the aisle. Dolph Ziggler grabs the mic again. Goldberg, you uh, you can all this stuff. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is getting fucking embarrassing. Yeah. So he comes back down to the ring again. Gives him another jackhammer or another spear or something. I'm like, all right. So I was on my way to fast forwarding through this whole thing, but I now yeah now I had to stop and watch this just to make sure I'm not they're not restarting the match right. or something. You know I don't know what's happening something here. Crazy yeah. But of course I'm like. Why would you bring this guy? Goldberg had one of the worst matches I've ever seen at uh, WrestleMania with Undertaker just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. They had one of the most the terrible matches. They're just old, dog. They tried to do too much. They're they're old. They can't pick each other up that way. He almost dropped Undertaker on his head. Oh shit! At WrestleMania, almost real legit injured the guy, and so he comes out again. I'm like, and I told I told my girl, I'm like, why? Why are they bringing this guy back? Like, and then right right off the bat when he super kicked him twice and then he speared him i was like oh this is gimmicky he's about to win this in two seconds and that's exactly what happened it just pisses me off wwe it just feels like they go and they're reaching because they can't rely on their new talent mm -hmm. they're not doing a good job of letting the new talent get over so they just keep reaching in the bag trying to pull these old talent and these old rabbits out of the hat it's almost like name dropping yeah dude but, and it's like know. at some point guys you got to let them go I, I, I love what they did. Yeah. They're WWE Hall of Famers. Yeah. It was cool, but let it go. Or they can be a part of the organization, just not fighting. Yeah, not wrestling, dude. Yeah. Not wrestling. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing when you have guys like Undertaker and Goldberg out there struggling to get through a match because they're so blown up, meaning they're so tired. Mm -hmm. And then you, then you have stuff like this where it's like you're just insulting the fans' intelligence. Like, really? You're going to have a squash match out here with Dolph Ziggler, one yeah. of the best workers? And if you love wrestling, you're probably a fan of Dolph Ziggler because the guy's an awesome wrestler. And I don't want to see him out there wasting his talent. He has to get beat in 10, right. 30 seconds, you know? What the hell? Well, and, and this, annoying. This, reminds annoying, me, man. this reminds me, you know, you saying all this, it's, it's funny because I actually over the weekend listened to the, the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast mm. and got to listen to the interview nice uh, with Hulk Hogan, nice dude. Style. How and good I'll, was that? It was so good. And I'll tell you... Um, you know, dude, I don't. I'm I don't. So proud I don't you, know bro. that Stone Cold is the best interviewer no, out there. No, no, no. You know, I think there's opportunities there. By any means. No. Um, you know, especially like how he gets off tangents and oh, hell trying yeah. to get back to it. But man, as you're talking about this, you know Goldberg and how old he is and dropping Undertaker, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking back to this podcast, and you know he's asking Hulk, and Hulk is like. You know, he's he's doing the cryotherapy. He went to yeah. uh, he went and had like transfusions, dude, for like, you know, for his back yeah. and just all these injuries that he's been through, man. And I just can't imagine somebody like Goldberg and Undertaker, who's still kind of in the limelight dude, of, of some sort, listening to all the torture that Hulk Hogan went through to know that somebody as old as Goldberg in the game and Undertaker still doing this, I dude. I know. It's you know, they even talked about DMT, all these different, you know, uh, per, you know, Stuff that they did for their injuries, yeah, putting like yep. this stuff on it with I and, and, and shredding up ibuprofen, almost like home remedies, yeah. dude. And, back, back locker room you know, remedies. And Hulk pain. Hogan was like, "I, dude, I never did it. I didn't He's like, "I anybody, never yeah. messed with it." And maybe that's good because a lot of his colleagues are not alive yeah, to this pain day. Pain pills, not, pain addiction, alcohol just addiction, crazy, just man. to cope with the pain. So if anybody out there, man, is into wrestling and you haven't listened to that podcast, I'm not even the biggest wrestling fan and have no idea what the hell is going on. It was enlightening for yeah, so dude. many reasons, dude. Yeah. And then having Stone Cold relate to it and knowing the business. and I'm glad you um, liked it. I'm so glad the changing, you listened to it. They talked about changing of the guards and yeah. all that. Dude, it was, it was Super good. Super interesting, really right? Good. Even if you're just a novice wrestling guy like yeah. you. You don't know a ton like me. You don't still follow it like crazy, but you know a little bit. Sure. So that's that's where you're going to find it interesting. Anyone from that, someone that's a diehard to someone that's just yeah. novice would love that. But that's my takeaway from SummerSlam. I know there's people that uh, really love the wrestling talk on here, so I try to mm -hmm. give it to you when it is topical and when it makes sense. 
Uh, so that's my take on it, man. I just I think they need to stop reaching in the bag and pulling up pulling out the old guys and totally. they need to let the new talent fly. Yeah. Let, let them let them give uh, them a name. Yeah. Let yeah. them get over. I'm a peacock. But you let we, me we, fly. T- we talked about it uh we talked about it about a month or so ago. I don't think they're they don't want to have stars anymore. Right. They just want to have <laughs> WWE. Mm-hmm. They don't want to have John Cena of WWE. They don't have Stone Cold Steve Austin of WWE. They want to have WWE and the guys that just participate within it. Nobody yeah. wants to get too elevated or too big anymore. That's so true. That's when you start leaving WWE, commanding more money, all this other start stuff. Start getting into yeah. movies, into it. all of that. I think yeah. Vince is kind of done with that, or they're trying to be done with it. But yeah, and I think the product suffers. So interesting, interesting stuff there. Let's um, let me see what we uh. Oh, Mike Posner. Do you want to talk about that really quick? Yeah. Before we jump into our uh, thrift confines. What happened over the weekend? I saw on social media. I haven't really followed Mike Posner for a hot minute, so mm-hmm. I was shocked to see this guy with a crazy beard. Yeah, crazy long hippie hair. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. JJ is looking at me sideways right now. Look well, it up. Look at Mike Posner. On as, and I can start talking about he it. Looks and as like you, a loon. You should you should pull up one of Mike Posner's famous songs. Like, and JJ will be like, "Oh yeah, oh, oh whoa." No, he know, you know, know who song. Mike Posner is, right? Yeah. He's looking no. at me sideways because oh. he's like, "Wait, when did he get long hair? When did he get a beard?" Gotcha. Yeah. When did I he think start looking like a when did he look homeless, dude. Yeah. I think everybody's thinking that. Yeah. So, yeah, for so sure. th- that's what he's saying. Yeah. So let's go back to how this all thing started. So Mike Posner is doing the walk across America right now. So what are some of his goals? So his goals are to leave each town that we go through a little bit better than uh, than when we arrive. So you know he's really into like kind of some of these hippie mentalities, you know, making the world a better place, you know, listening to people, giving people some time. Um, so his other goal was practice deep listening. I will be spending periods of my walk compassionately listening to people with as much of my full attention as possible. This means listening to others, not to the voice in my head. His third goal was to love everybody. His fourth goal was to sing for people. And I don't know if you've been seeing this, but if you follow him on Twitter, And maybe even his Instagram, he's literally doing a lot of his hit songs, you know, as he's that he's been a part of or that he's collabed with Um, his one of his really good friends, Avicii, when he passed away, he did some Avicii songs. Um, He's just been just kind of trying to better America with this walk. And then his fifth goal was to enjoy where I am in the journey. Don't waste my time obsessing about getting to the end. So this is really kind of a, a, a journey for him of getting to know people and kind of being more grounded with the world and and outside of the worldly things that are distractions right i.e the money the cars the you know the the bills and and the women and all the all these things that especially musicians and celebrities are a part of this is really just kind of trying to clear his headspace if so, you don't know mike posner he's a pop star he's yeah. created a ton of pop songs that's probably his most recent like huge smash huge, a couple right? summers ago uh took a pill in ibiza but i mean everything i mean dude is uh He's done a ton of pop hits. So that's yeah. Mike Posner, if you're unfamiliar. Yeah. So that being said, so he was into mile 1632. So, and his goal is 2,800. I just is, saw on his Twitter, he just passed Colorado. Did you see that? Yeah, or he for just sure. stepped into Colorado. Yeah, he was and, like, one side yeah. was Colorado, the other side was Kansas, I believe, or yeah. I don't remember. And he's like, you ain't, this ain't the... This ain't the interstate. You will never see. You know? Yeah. He's like, you know, and then he's like, look, mile marker this and right, this. And right. you can look it up, Google Maps or whatever, you know, to see where he was. But... This was at mile 1632. So the downfall is, as he's walking across America, this is pretty close to Colorado. Yeah. Is where he's at. I know. Which kind of <laughs> sucks, right? Yeah. Um, but he, out of 2,800, 2,800 was his goal across America. Yep. So he's at mile 1632, and he was bitten by a baby. Not a full grown. Yeah, yeah. And th- why this is important, and I'll tell you, he was bitten by a baby rattlesnake, dude, yeah. and almost died. Now, let's go back to this. If you look at snakes, right? I was raised on a farm. And and it's not that a baby rattlesnake versus a, a full adult rattlesnake, it's not that they have more venom or less venom. But a baby rattlesnake, the venom that they produce is more toxic than oh, a full-grown okay. rattlesnake. I thought and they it, just couldn't control how much toxin they gave that, their victim. That's that's part of it, know, but it's a little bit like, of that, but they can't control it like an adult, but they say it is a little bit more toxic as well. A, a bite, that being said, uh, than, than an adult. So kind of weird how that works out. So maybe he wouldn't be in this point if it was an adult rattlesnake, whatever it is. This guy got bit by a rattlesnake, was immediately, you know, he, he called for help. He was choppered out of there. 
Oh. And he had the anti-venom that they got. But they, his phone was working and stuff? Is that how he was able to call for help? I don't know exactly how all that worked out. I mean, because I'm sure he has a crew with him, somebody filming a couple people with him. I don't know what oh. all that worked. But oh, he, he has people with him then. Yeah. I think he's got at least one or two maybe with okay. him. I think. I was going to say, well, because I was... When he was walking out in the middle of nowhere and then yeah. the road, we were saying, Colorado here. I'm like, I was thinking, like, how is he uploading this video? Yeah. Uh, is this like the next day? He was at a ho- I'm, I'm confused. Yeah. So I don't know how all that works, to, but to get deep, but, uh, uh, but yeah, he was airlifted out of wherever he wow. was at mile 1632, uh, you know, by choppers, the whole thing. They got him the anti venom, got him to the hospital uh, in the nick of time. But dude, he's having a hell of a time. He's in rehabilitation trying to learn to walk again, dude. I know. They say he can't walk for two. He said he won't be able to walk for two weeks or something like it that. It is wild, man. I saw him. Uh, that's initially what I saw, dude. Mm-hmm. I saw him on Twitter and I saw him with the walker. And I was like, what the hell happened to this guy? And then I saw the video and I was like, whoa, what did I miss? Has this guy been in a coma for six months and his hair and his beard? Like what? I do. So <laughs> right. this is my initial thoughts of the, of the situation. I'm like, what happened here? And then as I start scrolling and look, I'm like, okay, no, he's been like this. All right. He's been doing some stuff. Okay. He's doing this walk thing. I was unfamiliar with all this. I had to read up. And then I saw that he uh, had gotten bitten by the rattlesnake and saw the whole story. So yeah, wild shit, dude. It's uh, but yeah, yeah. He said two weeks. So he should be back walking. Or, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, that's what they that's what they say. So, uh, man, and he was averaging roughly 24 miles per day. And now he's having to use a walker to wow. just get to the bathroom. I know, dude. Damn. It's, it's just a crazy story, man. But, you know, he's obviously got a real positive attitude through this. You know, his his whole reasoning for doing this in the first place is very positive, very holistic, very kind of hippie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, uh, to be grounded and that kind of thing. But going from, you know, 24 miles a day on average to being bit, it's having a crazy a accident, almost. possibly dying, having to learn to walk again uh, at, at some at some degree. What a, what a crazy story. Dude, he's doing some Forrest Gump shit. No shit. Like, look at it. his hair, his beard. Maybe, I know. He seriously is doing Forrest Gump shit. I mean, how many pairs of sneaks is he going through? I wonder yeah, if he's got know. like a Nike sponsorship or something. He's been wearing a lot of Nike uh, tech fleece stuff, like the the whole like not the joggers, but the the tech fleece that the, uh, dry almost fit look pants. like yeah, yeah like, almost look almost look like yoga pants for yeah, guys. Yeah, they're like tight for tights yeah. for underneath your. He's probably wearing them underneath his ball those, or yeah. his uh, basketball basketball shorts or whatever. Yeah, yeah, cool man, hell yeah, so, crazy story man. So uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully I, he can heal pretty fast. I think he'll be to, good. I hope um, he's hopefully he goes with what he said. Two weeks, man, yeah. walk again. Uh, let's get into the thrift con stuff. I'm looking over at this rack full of shit. Dude. How are we going to handle this? I remember how we did it last time, and it was kind of a shit show, but uh, I, I hung everything out on yeah, it's a rack. Not, it's newer. Let's just have Steen go over there and hand us, go down the well, line. Why don't we just start with this piece right here that's on the shelf? Okay, oh. Steen, go ahead. All, All right. right. Steen. Cool. Yesterday. So, you know me, man. Big tennis fan, right? Yeah. I love tennis, man. And, uh, you know, Michael Chang uh, was probably my second or third favorite after like a uh, Agassi or, or, or an Andy Roddick. Um, and they were big Prince guys. They played the Prince brand rackets and me all throughout uh, high school because that was back in the day. Prince kind of ran the market. You know, you could argue that head was a part of it. You could argue that vocal was a part of it. But I got to tell you, man, anybody who was anybody played Prince. Unless your Agassiz played head, right? Yeah. But, um, so this, I saw this yesterday, dude. And I'm like, oh my God. I had a buddy that had something kind of similar to this. He had his Prince bag and he had like six rackets. And my poor ass had like two rackets. <laughs> and they were totally different, right? Which is the most stupid thing ever. Because if you're playing tennis, dude, uh, you want both of them to be strung at the right, at, you know, at, at the right um I would even call it the right tension, mm-hmm. you know, and and if they're not, then you're going to play different Then you know, your whole game is off, play, much less using two different rackets, but we were poor, you know, poor farmers, and that's what I had, so I had to play with what I had, but I remember my buddy, man, he had like six Prince rackets, dude, he had like the two bags, he had three in each bag, going dual shoulder, looked like Rambo, dude, Rambo nice. of tennis, nice, yeah. you know, and he had a bag bottle just like this that we see so what you're looking at here is uh one of those little water bottles in its own little zippable cooler so you unzip this little prince guy and what you will have exposed is a big ass water container plastic water container that you can fill up you just slide it right out kind of like so i won't slide the whole thing out but you just slide that plastic piece out there put it back in it kind of insulates it a little bit there's not really like super insulation to keep it cool but back when this came out it was probably the nicest of what they had yeah you know to kind of keep the temperature regulated right right you know what i mean you know what would have been dope 
if they would have had the if they would have had a thing right here on this side to fill it so you didn't have to pull the whole thing yeah. out if you just had a little bit of a nozzle right there like just an opening yeah and that was built in yeah that'd so be you could pour either pour it out quicker uh-huh or you could just drink out the top and you can use that to fill or pour that would have uh, been more efficient yeah more efficient exactly yeah no doubt so i had to buy it man nice though dude it was uh it was one of those things and it's a nice little what do you think that is 80s um, no, I would say this is probably like uh, early 90s, so early maybe 90s? like a 91, 92 okay. is what I think. I didn't see any dates I on it. I didn't either, yeah. But based off of when I was playing and kind of in the game, that's somewhere in there. 90, I would I would say 91 to 93. Nice. That's what that piece is from. So Before we get into all the... Um, that was only like five bucks, too. Before we get into all the other stuff, here, Stringstein, you can bring that over here, actually. Well, and we'll, we'll talk about this and this all together here. Sit down for a second. What did you guys... Let's just talk about ThriftCon in general before yeah. we go through all this stuff. What did you think about the event this time? Did you like it better than last time? What were your overall uh, sentiments of this year's? Well, well Str- you weren't there. The Stringer so wasn't mind. there last yeah, time. So you. for me, man, um, I got to tell you, uh, this event is growing, and it is growing at a at a nice pace, man. So shout-outs to Mario and what he's doing. You know, you and I kind of talked to him a little bit when we first got there, and uh, this was pretty well organized, it sounds like. You know, him and his team, you know, even within like Friday night, Saturday night, they almost, by Saturday for sure, they were almost kind of looking around like, damn, we already got this done. We're, we're good yeah, to go. That's what like, he was saying. Things, were, things ran very smoothly, mm-hmm. not only pre the event, but when we were there. Um, I will tell you, uh, the AC which continues to be an issue. I mean, I've seen concerts at National uh, Western Complex. That event center um, there, uh, you know, I, the State Fair, when they have that there, the AC is always a problem there. Yeah. So we thought, ah, maybe ThriftCon couldn't get something worked out with National Western. Dude, it's an old building. Yeah, it's, Their AC system is, is atrocious. So That was the only thing I'd say. It was hot in there, but there was a lot of people. It was That was the only it's opportunity. But they packed this thing out, dude. Yeah. And from the first one to this one, dude, it was way bigger. There was probably, like I said, double the vendors, at least at this one. And it was still packed house, man. So shout outs to Mario and the organization. I think they did a great job there. Um, made a lot of great networking opportunities. We might have somebody to help us print, dude. We might have some uh, some options for designs um, and just some great contacts, man. It's incredible how many people have do- such dope shit uh, from our city over there and how many connections that we had i just thought everything from the marlboro mountain that we saw with all the marlboro <laughs> right. stuff and the promo gear that was up in there it's kind of cool to see it because we don't have much of a sneaker culture over here we don't have much of like really anything so it's so hard to find type like cool stuff to find so mm-hmm. like you said it's kind of cool to see everything from colorado brought together into yeah. one place. Yeah, because you did. You saw a lot of new and old stuff. Um, yeah. A lot of old vintage there. But, you know, there are a couple booths that had the off-white stuff, you know, yeah. where it comes to the shoes. And you had some Supreme. Oh, there, you had dude, bootleg stuff, There were some like, steals, you know. Yeah. We had uh, uh, some of the crew that uh, JJ works with, Notorious. Some of those guys uh, that work for them. I mean, they found uh, the Muhammad Ali Supreme uh, shirt, dude. From 2009. Uh, for 2009 for 50 bucks what? wasn't cracked no was cracked perfect. paint dude bucks? on it yeah so there were some Whoa. skills there there were some yeah. people who didn't know what they had there were some people that knew what they had um there were some people that were taxing pretty heavy yeah. oh yeah um but you know there were some people that were pretty cool like if you want to do some bundle deals you know people were super open yeah, you to buy it. a few items if you uh yeah. if you wanted to some they would let you haggle a little bit you could sure. talk them down dude i was really uh the homie that you got all your, the homie you got the Wu Tang jacket and the off white Terra uh, Yeah, he had those 1985 Jordan One Chicago's. Yeah. Wow, those are sick. Size 12. Yeah, I wanted them so bad. Probably. Would you rate the condition maybe an eight, eight and a half? Dude, I would say for that age, for that aging, at, at least eight, eight and a half. You I, still it, had the Nike was, Air on the insole, dude. Yeah, the cracking and chipping was not much at all, and that was a pair you could still wear. Yeah. If you wanted to throw that pair on, you could. They didn't because why? Because you explain this. You we, were, we were talking about this the other day. You don't have the big air bubbles saying? that you know. The air bubbles literally just disintegrate after time. Yeah. Or the or everything around the midsole. You don't think around that rubber outsole would have just? Um, you know, I think you could be careful and wear those, but um, it, because you didn't have that exposed air bubble that is a big, big part of your midsole. Yeah. Um, I think you get away with it. 
So I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go play some Paul right, in right. those joints. So he had but, those joints for eight fifty. Yeah, in a size twelve, and I was like, man, I no looked box, up, no box. Yeah. which I looked up on Goat. They had a size twelve used on there for thirteen fifty, and they weren't even close to the condition that yeah. these are in. Yeah, both had no box, so it looked for me like I. It would probably you could probably make a little bit of money on them, mm-hmm. but I, I was like, ah, oh, man, I don't know if I want to just sit on eight fifty, especially right now. Right, you know, like at the, at the time we're in, where we got to get this going, and we got to put out, we got to strategically place our money, so. I had to pass on him, but it was something that was really cool to me. It was cool to see. Yeah, it was re- just really cool to see and hold in person. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen a. I don't even know if I've seen. Actually, I think I've seen him in a case, but I don't think I've ever touched right. a pair of 1985 yeah. Yeah. Jordan ones. You know, the <laughs> yeah, he was he was all. keeping a pretty good eye on him, but he was also pretty cool to let you check yeah, him out dude. or che- let anybody kind of check mm-hmm. him out and uh, be a part of it. So you saw culture from the old and new. Uh, my my biggest question is JJ, you're Uh-oh. pretty cultured for your age. Oh geez, what did you think, man? Was it cool to see? Did oh, you recognize okay. a lot of this stuff? Did you, you know, <laughs> did you feel? Uh, did you feel a part of this? Uh, How'd you feel? It was definitely interesting because I have gone out with my little brother once or twice to kind of look for this kind of vintage stuff, mm-hmm. and really didn't come out too successful. So it was kind of cool to kind of see everything brought together into one place. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things I never really like expected to see, especially just like this uh, Ducati racing jacket and just the Miller Lite and just the various different things you've guys found that mm-hmm. they'll see in a minute. I never like knew existed, so mm-hmm. it's kind of cool. It's like I don't know. It it would just be interesting to see if maybe they some of these brands would decide to bring some of this back because it's so cool. Like, like re- retro some of it yeah, well you're exactly. seeing you're seeing some of that with the chalk lines right you know so you had your og chalk lines and now you see the fanimation you know yeah, the yeah. newer style you know where the colors are a little bit more vibrant and kind of retroing some of that stuff maybe the design uh or the or the uh the pattern is a little different colors are a little different um because obviously materials are quite different from what they were back yeah, then yeah. um but i think they are doing some of that but i think you're right what was your favorite part of thriftcon thriftcon yeah what's like your favorite part? piece or just Anything. Um, Peace part, you know, what we did, what you find the coolest? So, I guess two things. Obviously, not the the chicken tenders that you ate for lunch. I didn't. Oh, you ate a burger. Oh, you ate a burger. We ate Um, chicken tenders. The 1985 Jordans, those were sweet. But a thing that, like, cracked me up the most seeing is all the Elway shit. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. It's just like the random things, like the Duke of Denver, the oh, Riflemen. Yeah, yeah oh, the <laughs> Riflemen, dude. <laughs> the that right, was, that so was tight. It was John Elway. It was like a huge framed uh, picture mm-hmm. of John Elway. Him, He actually took this at some point. Yeah. yeah. He's Someone in, forced him into it. He's in a straight-up cowboy hat. This cowboy vest. He looks like Woody from Toy Story. He's in, <laughs> he's in chaps, a cowboy vest, and a cowboy hat, and he's standing there with two guns on his hips and holsters, and he's looking at you like he's about to do a quick draw. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. The holsters have footballs in them, not guns. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah. Right. That's right. The holsters have football in them. And he's looking at you like he's about to do a quick draw. And it says the rifleman down oh, below wow. him. And I was just like, me and JJ were just staring at it. like, And I was like, dude, could you imagine buying this and taking it to training camp <laughs> and just showing up and yeah. holding up and trying to get him to sign this I need this you to thing. sign this. You'd either be so mad at you because <laughs> yeah. that thing is so terrible. Yeah. And he's so sad he agreed to doing that. <laughs> Or he'd be like, "Where in the hell did you get that? <laughs> that is so cool." And yeah. when the hell did I do that? Like, I think went, we, I think we should have bought that and then that went was, to the I last couple. The price. We should have went th- to the last couple training camps and just see if, <laughs> just hold that up. <laughs> yeah, feature see footage. If, see, <laughs> if, <laughs> see if he's anywhere there, dude. And sees that? I want the rifle, that, dude. At least get, at least show that to Vaughn. Vaughn would die. I Vaughn know. might buy it from you on the spot. And yeah. Like, oh, I gotta have that, Mister Elway. I gotta have Mister. He always calls him Mister Elway. Yeah. I gotta have Mister Elway sign that. I bet you, Vaughn. Oh, oh dude. my gosh. You just held that up. Vaughn would be dying. Who wouldn't think that's hilarious? It's his boss dressed in a cowboy <laughs> outfit. <laughs> what are we doing? Why didn't we buy that? I don't know, guy. It was so. That's the thing I would say about ThriftCon. It was so. It was overwhelming. It's, oh we God. got in for the early bird. We popped in an hour earlier than everybody else had said. We got there like 9 15. Yeah. We got in the venue. And so we had until 10 without everyone else being in there. There was only a few other people in there. We maybe got through 20% of the thing. 25% of the thing in an hour. Yeah, we were like, I don't even we were like oh, oh, dude, what are we doing? And now and then all of a sudden, flooded, it must started getting yeah. flooded, started getting crowded, deals started getting swooped up, things started getting swooped up. What I didn't, this time, um, I pretty much got everything I wanted. I didn't, 
the Macho Man jacket I would have liked to have, yeah. but I could I could have taken it or leave it because I can get it again. It's a Fanimation. It's a retro chocolate. It's not an OG. Mm-hmm. Um, but but other than that, I, I didn't feel, feel like good. that. Last time, remember, you remember I missed out on that Kids Michigan jacket? I oh, passed yeah. on it. We walked away, and I went back like three, four minutes later. I was like, dude, I got, I'm going to get it. If I have a kid someday, this is the cutest damn thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> it was a starter yeah. Michigan jacket. Tiny. Like, the size of a shoebox, yeah. and it was looked so oh it was awesome and i was like i gotta go back and get it and it was gone and the guy was like yeah dude i'm sorry i just sold it i think my wife sold it to some girl who's gonna try to wear it i was oh, like wow. what he's like yeah she was gonna try to like fit in it i was like where is she at i'm about to bulldog this girl's head in the pavement what yeah. are you doing stop messing it up that's uh that's uh that's thrift con that's the one thing but i didn't have that happen this time yeah so that was cool but uh let's I get did. back to uh, i did with a newport shirt Oh, that's right. But I don't regret it because of what we're going to show here in a minute. Exactly, exactly. All right, so let's uh, let's look at some of the novelty items here before we get into the the clothing. This here, these joints. If you saw these on my story yesterday, mm-hmm. the I, I put these up on my IG story as kind of a little sneak peek. These are original Coors Field suspenders. Now, the thing that makes these cool is they were only issued for one season, and they on the leather. This leather patch on the back, they say 1995 inaugural season. So the Rockies were birthed here in Denver in 1993. Yep. We They played at Mile High Stadium for two years before they opened Coors Field, which is their own baseball field. Uh, great park if you've never been. If you come to Denver, Coors Field's a must. Yeah. It's one of the aw- most awesome parks. If you can go to a night game there, the sunset over the <sighs> mountains, they intentionally kept that side of the field open. Bet. There's no bad seat in the house. You could sit anywhere and enjoy the game. If you don't want to sit at all, you can be up on the rooftop patio Ooh. getting drinks, uh, be, you know, mile high up there, yeah. hanging out with the purple seat people. Yeah. Um, it's It's awesome. I, I highly recommend a lot of women with the, with the claws drinks, which yes. is great. Yes. White claws. Tis the oh season. White claws drinks. Yep. Oh yeah. We love it. Hot girl <sighs> summer out here. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, but yeah, so these, this thing says 1995 inaugural season. So these are only given out to the ushers for one season. There's not a ton of pairs of these in existence. Mm-hmm. I was really, really happy to pick these up. I got a good price on them and uh, I'm just happy to have them in the collection. I might, I was thinking about giving them to my uncle. I'm not sure yet. I think you should. These are, uh, I These think are I sweet, actually though. have the tickets to that game. Oh, what are we doing? Let's so, get them together and get a package deal. That's what going. we need to do. You need the ticket. You give the, give franchise the tickets, or make him a price, and then, dude, get like a little shadow box and have everything kind of mounted in the box, dude, and have it a display mm. piece would be super sick. Christmas. I almost ran out of breath. Did you hear yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> wow. I think it was Ric Flair doing a promo. Yeah, no doubt. Wow. You can put those back. Yeah, on those are the sweet, man. I like those. Um, let me. Uh, what What was the Oh damn! There was one. There was another novelty item. I got one right on. here, dude. Oh, yeah. oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. I picked up this cup, <laughs> dude. Look at this. This, this is, is interesting. New, yeah. This is my new show mug. I, I'd say that's a bladder buster three thousand, <laughs> dude. It's got the rock on it. Yeah. It's got Trish Stratus, and it's got Stone Cold, Stone Steve, Cold Austin Steve Austin on the inside. You got a little Stratus faction who we talked about. Look how young she looks there, I, and it's so she weird looks seeing like her. young Pamela Anderson. Yeah, dude. Weird. But, you saw her last night. She's so much thinner now. She's mm-hmm. like a really fit older lady now. Yeah. But it's funny seeing her there. As she's a young, hot here. Young kid. Yeah, she's probably in her early 20s. Wow. So, uh, yeah, funny, man. I picked up this mug. <laughs> Someone probably threw this out, and the guy probably got it for 50 cents at a garage sale. So Yeah, that was probably, a, that was probably uh, a 7-Eleven. Pro- oh, yeah, it, it was. was. It was. Slurpee, Slurpee on it. It was a Slurpee promo. Now, if you're drinking a Slurpee this size, you definitely got type 2. You're diabetes for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. You definitely. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I drink a lot of soda, but I don't drink sodas like that. Right. And I never finish my sodas, so I actually don't technically drink a whole soda. That's weird. I leave it like half. That's a waste. I'm kind of like, so check this out. You know what I'm like? Uh, You know, my uh, territory manager's like this, Gareth. So what we like to do is we like to have a bunch of bites and tastes of things and drinks, uh, the same thing. So I want to get something. I'm like, oh, man, I crave that. But give me two drinks of a Dr. Pepper. I'm good to go. I don't need any more. It's a waste of money. It's stupid. Yeah, it's not good. But I just have these wants. But hopefully that keeps me from getting diabetes. Yeah, that's true. So not checking yeah, it up. I like that, dude. That's a cool yeah, mug. That's I'm a little jealous. That's yeah, cool. Thank I'd you. like one. Oh, you wanted one? Yeah. I didn't know that he had two for sale. He did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, damn. That sucks. I'll get. I'll get my own. I, I, I won't now. get a wrestling one. I'll get something that I'm passionate about. But I need a bladder buster about that size. Yeah, you do. This is good. Now. You don't have to ever worry about getting in refills during the show. It's a hell, dude, right now we got a hell of a hydration station. Hydrated. Dude, look I'm at hydrated this. Hydrated with we this got thing. the prints. We just need a toilet right back there. If you're not watching yeah. on YouTube and you just listen to the audio, this thing is uh, it's a very big coffee mug looking uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great. 
thing from 7-Eleven. It's got wrestlers on the side. <laughs> hey, I got, right. I got something special for the cast. I love this. I love I, uh, this so much. Oh, go ahead. I passed on the... I, go, what you well, got? I was going to say we should open the sunshade too. We never opened that camel sunshade, dude. Oh, I don't know where that's at. That should be displayed up here. <laughs> we might have to move the genuine draft mirror. Put the sun... That balances that. The genuine... The, the sunshade was fire. I, where were you about an hour ago? I just thought of it right now when you were opening this. I was All like, right. didn't we have something else we were going to open? All right. Don't get used to this decor up here. This I is going to evolve. get kicked off the, the cast. cast. Nice. That was the sound bite. We actually have the iPad back. All right. So um, I was I was sad because I, I skipped out on, on a Newport shirt. You know, the old Newport smokes, right? Um, and I went back, but instead of like three to four minutes like you did on your Michigan jacket, yeah. we went back like an hour or two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course like after it's lunch. gone, right? Yeah. So it had the white t-shirt and it had the Newport orange, you know, display right, that yep. everybody just knows what that is. And almost like the upside down Nike swoosh, yep. which I which I love, man. So that's cool to me. But I was able to find this novelty item and I got this for like 10 bucks. I think it's worth it all day. This is probably one of these promo t-shirts for buying multiple cartons, I assume, probably in the past. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what yeah. this pack is from. <laughs> uh, but it's dead stock, i.e. DS. We're so gonna it has undead, a tape on it. We're going to undead stock this for the cast and see what shirt is in here. All I know is it's a Newport shirt and it's a size large hopefully it's the right one here. you want i'm hoping it's the <laughs> white t-shirt with the orange newport How writing with that with be? the orange upside down nike what swoosh. else would it be i don't know let's check it out this has black on what it so maybe it's a white one, t-shirt though? with black writing That'd be the worst but that would be the worst because this if it's not bright orange is that's what we newport. need all right what color is your other shirt though because i know you got one the last time you guys went not a newport no, uh, it wasn't Newport. Uh, uh-uh. you got a Newport hat. I got a you Newport, got the Newport hat. Green, oh, okay. The neon green Newport hat. Okay. So it's a white T-shirt. Oh, uh, dude, if it's black logo, I'm gonna be. I'd it's be green, worst. dude. This thing is so wrinkled and thin. Oh, that's, that's cool oh. though. That matches the hat, perf. Let's see. That's actually that's not bad. See-through, dude. man. <laughs> yeah. Look I how like thin that. this thing is, dude. Look how. Look at that bacon neck on the collar. Oh yeah! Look at that huge collar. Look Holy how wide shit, that collar is, dude. dude and even that back, was a collar, dude. Even in back in the day for this promo, so I assume this is probably '90s at some point. Um, fifty fifty, fifty percent cotton, fifty percent uh, poly. Nice, really nice, nice thin shirt, dude. I think, and it's a large. It's gonna fit me perfect. Nice. I feel like I should wear this the rest of the cast if it wasn't so wrinkled. I feel like you should just wear it wrinkled. You should probably just take the thumbnail in it wrinkled. Maybe so. This is great. <laughs> But I, I like it, dude. What do you think? I'm just over here looking like a Mario Andretti's pit group crew from 92. <laughs> You're looking wrinkled. <laughs> How does it smell? <laughs> smell like a pack of smoke. It smells like an, an attic. <laughs> like an old attic. Yeah. Yeah. You never nice. know with some of that thrift stuff. Dude, I'm pumped on it. That's cool. I like it. It's going to be cool. my daily driver now. No, it is not. I'm going to wear this every cast, <laughs> no, every no, thumbnail. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. That's pumped cool. Nice. I'm sad. A little sad it's not the orange, but I know. Do. But the the other one that we saw yesterday was just like this. It wasn't as thin as this T-shirt, but it, it, same logo, same everything, just an orange. Yeah, for sure. It's cool. Attic? Yeah, attic. Right. Little attic. All right, Stringer, uh, what else we got? Stringer. Are you going to start with oh, your shoes? Yeah. Or? You want to talk? Well, no. We're going to talk oh, about those. We're going to leave those for sneakers and fashion. Yeah. I was able to pick up a... So just give you a little... Little sneaks. A little foreshadowing, little sneaks. Um, I was able to pick up a shoe that is a collab... Uh, that I think is actually pretty cool. So we'll talk about that in sneakers and fashion. Let's start with that. All right, man. JJ, way to go! Way to go with the best thing that any of us bought. No shots against your Ducati oh, yeah, yeah. pit crew shirt here. No, but the pit crew shirt, the Undertaker jacket. It's fine. All my stuff's shit, Dal. No big deal. <laughs> what you're seeing here is the new chalk line, Wu Tang Protect Your Neck Dead Stock Fanimation Jacket. Pretty Dude, sweet. This is a sick purchase. So <sighs> this right here was the bundle that I did with the homie um, with the off-white Terra Kigers and this. Yeah. Dude, he gave me a super steal. Yeah, he did. I mean, I think this is a great deal. This jacket alone goes for, you know, anywhere 250 and more. Yeah. You know, there's a couple other fanimations with not as cool of They're design. not yellow. The thing about that is the bright yellow. Yeah. The, the core color is yellow. The other ones, the core color was black, and then they just had yellow accents. That's what makes that shit dope. Yeah. Uh, brutal honeys. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. I mean, why didn't I have that for the brutal honey? I know, right? Shoot. So, man, I'm really, really pumped on this. Honey all over it. Um, it. 
obviously I, I grew up on Wu-Tang. I love 36 Chambers. That is, that's like the soundtrack of my life when, when we're talking hip hop, you know, I've got the Wu-Tang tat, man. There's just, I was super pumped to have this. And then there was this New Yorker that uh, walked up as soon as I had this in my hand was actually getting ready to buy it. And we bought it like pretty late in the day. And he's like, I'm, I can't do New York, yeah, but, yeah. uh, Hey, yo, man, hey, you, buy, you, you buying that or what? You know, gives me a little, you know, I'm like, hey, man, maybe. I'm thinking about it. He's like, you sure, man? You sure? You sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to buy it. <laughs> you don't need to buy that. You don't need to buy that. I'm like, okay, man. I, and so I walk away from him. But uh, so, yeah, I ended up taking it, man. Uh, love it, I don't man. know why that's so funny Super happy with this piece. But why was he? I will say. Did he we want were it? trying to huh? take a. Did he want it? It was, okay, I will say we were trying to take a story, so it sounded like you were just trying to get some clout or something for it. So I could kind of get why he was coming you at, like coming at you from that angle. Oh but yeah. I, oh, so what? You, so what? JJ saying is this guy saw us trying to do a story on it. Yeah. And maybe he thought we weren't interested in buying it. We were just, just kind of doing it off. for the social media oh, aspect. Gotcha. I didn't know that that was at that time. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I did a social post on Stringer this. Stringer paying attention for one. Look at you, String. There you go, Stringer. Like, Definitely hang that back up. We don't want that touching ground, man. I'm giving you some applause. I know you can't hear it, JJ, but I'm a. Uh... Yeah, he gave you applause. All right. All right. Oh, how, well, about, how about you talk about <laughs> yours real quick? I love this one, dude. This is sweet. Uh, all right. So my guy, my guy, <laughs> Johnny Elbow, John Elway. Yeah. In this dope <laughs> orange shirt. At first, we were both looking at the shirt, and we were very confused. We are like, what, what is this? What the hell does that say? What does this say? What's going on here? And it says, El Huey Sable, mm -hmm. which is like Elway knows. El Huey. Way, El Huey it's E-L-G-U-E-Y. E like, <laughs> like, like Spanish, like, hey, way. El Huey. Hey, way. Yeah. You know? It's a little Espanol for you. It's a little play on words. El Huey. El Huey. Knows. Is what that says in Spanish. Oh, I knows, baby. That's, that's a sick portrait of him. I love it, too. Yeah, it's just the old ass <laughs> helmet hair, <laughs> helmet hair, beetle looking John Elway yeah. with the big horse teeth and the freaking on the nice on the nice orange wash. I love the wash of this shirt. Yeah, it's a great color. It's almost like a heather orange wash. Yeah, textured. dude, it's all thin. This is nice, dude. El Huey knows. This is obviously a custom. And uh, our homie from Division West put this together. He did. So that's my guy right there. I got to give him a shout out for that. We had to support him. Actually, we're going to have him on Thursday. Oh, are we? We're going nice. to have him on the show Thursday. Sick. He's going to talk about Division West. It is closing at the end of the month. Tons of deals. If you have 31st. not heard, get over there before the end of the month. It's in Cherry Creek. Yeah. Tons of sneaker deals, man. If you're, Especially if you're a guy that likes Asics, yeah. New Balance. Uh, Kavu. Yes. Some of those. Some of those other brands yeah. that aren't super, super hype. Check it out, man. Division yeah. West. We'll have him on Thursday to talk all about it. Kind oh. of a hidden gym right yeah. now. 30% off store-wide is, is what it really is. They're talking about maybe doing upwards of 40% off by the end of the week. We'll see. Um, dude, shoes starting at 25 bucks. What dude. are we doing? What are we doing? Are, so, el Huey. El Huey. I don't know. <laughs> so check this one out, man. <laughs> Let's keep the John L.A. train going, yes, man. So way. this is the one JJ actually alluded to earlier. Let me give you a better look here. I can hold it up if you want. Yeah. Boom. So this is the one uh, titled The Duke of Denver. And this is kind of one of those uh, nostalgic like 90s looking t-shirts, you know, that had almost like a caricature, right, of John Elway doing uh, doing his thing there called The Duke of Denver. And then I think it says AFC Champs on the bottom. Does it give the year? Uh, it just says officially licensed product. Doesn't 100% give the year, though. cotton inside. It's a Stedman. Washington well, a instructions Chet Stedman? Not, Chet Stedman. Ooh, Real America 88. 88. Tiny little 88 there, dude. Sick, dude. It's tiny. Yeah, so kind of your caricature looking shirt, you know, that they did back back then, 80s and 90s, I guess you'd say there. Um, yeah, just really, really cool, man. Uh, has his, you know, the helmet hair again, the big ass horse, te horse teeth. You just can't, you just can't beat it, man. It is Denver. In a nutshell, on it's a t-shirt. It's the Duke of Denver. It is the Duke of Denver. Nice. There so, we go. Happy to have that one as well. Let's keep the theme going. All right. This was your cop. This Here, was, I'll hold it up for you. Yeah, dude. I uh, I got a steal on two different jackets. You can actually, um, it was this one and then the USA one. Go ahead and get that one ready. We'll do that one next because I bought them together. Mm -hmm. And I got a steal on these. Same thing, bundle deal. Like you said, there was a lot of bundle deal shit going on. If yeah. you're buying multiple things from guys, they were hooking you up. So I bought, this is actually, uh, it was going to be a personal. I think it might be just a tad too small for yeah. me, man. Um, so I think I might have to throw it up. We're going to have the Shopify going. Mm-hmm. 
website. And we have a we have a bunch of coats and windbreakers we copped last time. So those are hockey jerseys. All that stuff is going to be ready to go for fall. Yeah. So we're going to load all that up on the site. Make sure you keep the uh, social media locked, the Instagram account locked. I'll let you guys know when that is live and when this stuff's going to go up on there. But I love, dude, that jacket's in like pristine. pristine. Like none of those, look at the white on the cut. There's not any rubbing off there. Nothing. The white ain't stained. I mean, the that's the stitching's a, good. The inside, which is always white on most of these. Yep. Uh, the label, the starter labels in good condition, just a beauty. And what we know about these, right? The eighties and the nineties, these, uh, like chalk line esque or pro line in this case, pro line, um, oh, they run short, starter pro line. They yeah. run short. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you are uh, buying these, you might want to size up, but the problem is it just gets bigger in the shoulders. What is that? An XL? Yeah, that's an XL. XL. So that should fit me, right? Yeah. But it gets bigger in the shoulders and wider, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily get, get long, longer. longer on these old jackets. Yeah. So like, especially if you're a heavier guy, these are tough, dude. Yeah, Unless no you're short. If you have a longer torso like me, right. like I just have a long torso, dude. That's why I like drop hem shirts. They fit my torso so yeah. good. That's why this Marlboro shirt fits good because it's a big shirt, yeah. but it fits me. See, I've got a short nicely. torso. Right. So these, I can do a lot of these mm -hmm. um, in that size large because yeah. I do have broad shoulders, but I got a short torso right so i can do it right. a lot here's your bundle deal so this is the other starter i copped with it the team usa starter goes harder look at that man this one the same thing tons of white on it all mint condition dude yeah. not a stain on the white not dude, a stain at all the the arms like aren't all stretched nope. out dude this on the is, arm sockets this has maybe been i don't even know if this has been worn if it has dude it doesn't show any signs tell the people why you bought this what's coming up the Olympics, yeah, 2020. Ooh. I think this is a piece you could sell uh, before the Olympics. It's there. gonna be a hot piece. I might. I. You might have to keep this. This is sick. You don't have a lot of Olympic stuff. I don't. You dude. might need to keep this starter Olympic jacket. Got it on a bundle deal, again. dude. The Look embroidery the is perfect. There's no paint chipping. There's Nothing, no dude. Dude, it is. This is pure gold right here. This is the gold. That was the, that's just the cool thing about ThriftCon was like JJ said, it was cool to see everything put together. Especially because you don't have to do anything. You're just going and picking through the best of the best. You're picking through what everyone else has tried, to, has scoured through tons of hours. Right. And you're taking all their hard work. Yeah, you're paying a little more for it, but you're paying for their hard work. So I don't mind it. Yeah. You know, I didn't get this at uh, flea market prices, but $25 for jackets, you know, for $30 for jackets. That ain't bad, dude. Yeah, one offs almost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, exactly. for as old as it is. So you could, man, there was a ton of deals to be, a ton of deals to be had mm -hmm. over there. Uh, all right, what's next? Next jacket, man. I had to get something from what I would call my alumni. Oh, boy. I had to represent, man. All of a sudden, he's come, a big fan. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I, did, I didn't want to get, uh, uh, I didn't want to get lit up anymore by, uh, by your boy. What, was it Chase? Yes. Yeah. I didn't want to get lit up anymore. Gear. Yeah. Oh, wait, Dallas, biggest KU fan, ain't got no gear. Dallas always reps KU, no gear. Dallas, now he has gear. Dallas got gear. Oh, oh It's a little light jacket, uh, great for early fall. Um, has a little bit of that real soft insulation, you know, um, that you just couldn't beat in the 90s. Like, it's the same insulation that you would see in a lot of, like, the joggers. Yes, the, you know, windbreaker, the, the jackets, windbreaker jackets. Yep, the windbreaker jackets. Those windbreaker jogger suits. That real nice stuff. It's The stuff that you put your leg through and it's falling out the bottom and you can't get your foot out the bottom of the jogger because yeah. it's clogged up by that white lining on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's the stuff. Makes you a little extra sweaty. Yes. That's the stuff. That's you the got stuff. This is the jacket with the little KU rock chalk on the left I like the breast. strings, dude. The strings with the little uh, lace locks. Yeah. Those are dope. Like, I just think it gives the jacket a really dope look. Yeah, it does. And then, you've car of course, you got- Same thing. on. They got them on the bottom, too. Oh, that's sick. Nice. I didn't even see those. Yeah, I like that. And then you got your little, your little uh, you know- Po center pouch center pocket. pocket pouch, you yep. know, that they had like in the starter pouch. jackets, you know. Yep. So you put your wallet and your weed and, you know, whatever else. Whatever else. Your rejuvenator wipes. Nice. Perfect for that. KU. They going uh, all the way shot. this year? No. <laughs> uh, give, give, them, give them another two years. So last year was a rebuilding year. This year will be rebuilding. Uh, two years, though, we'll be rocking and rolling. All right. This is a sick piece, man. I'm proud of you on this one. This one, the UCLA colorway. It's not official UCLA, but it's Adidas tracksuit, baby blue, yellow down the sleeves, the three stripes, yellow trefoil, and Adidas on the uh, left breast there. Mm -hmm. You've got the hanging Adidas trefoil logo on the zipper. Very, very sick. You've got the hood on the inside mm -hmm. that unfolds out. This thing, again, it zips out. mint condition. Mint condition. Beauty. A little breathing in the back. Yeah. A little bit of breathing holes for gotta you. Got to have that. But not only the jacket. What else? The pants, bro. What else, Sway? We got the pants. The the, the matching pants. The with, matching with the price tag. The matching oh jeez. Yeah. With the price tag. I ain't gonna see it. 
Uh, what was oh the the pants were ripped. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I got confused for a second. So these joggers, here you could take this real quick, JJ or Dell. So the, you look at the jacket, pants are the same thing. Little drawstring there. Mm -hmm. The pants have a little bit of a rip at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I have a lady that does really sick tailoring. She uh, extends pockets in, in pants for me that they're just too shallow. She mm -hmm. does whatever. She sews belt loops onto stuff that I that's, doesn't have belt loops. She, I'm going to have her fix these, and I'm going to have her make them into like joggers, dude. Oh, that'd be sick. And I'm just going to have a, just a straight, sick Italian mobster-looking jumpsuit, dude. I'm going nice. to just wait till you see how I roll out this winter. I'm is this a personal? fall. Personal for a little while. I might yeah. rock it a couple times. I mean, yeah. how many times can you wear a bright blue baby blue jumpsuit? Dude, I can't wait to watch you wear this, dude, without a, a shirt underneath. Oh, just yeah. the jacket. Dude, jacket. All, all your hamburger meat just hanging Italian out. Italian chest hair. Not good. Popping. Below, not good. This is great. With the drug dealer glasses. This is <laughs> fire, dude. This is, this fire. is fire. I'm going to get pulled over in three seconds with the dark tints on my car. I didn't know you were a UCLA town. fan. Not No, not. I just like the colorway. Dude, UCLA has a great colorway. What shoes are you wearing with those? Uh, are you going to mix brands? No. You, I don't think you have any Adidas that color, do you? UCLA no. blue, yellow. But you know what would go good with those? What's that? Those uh, EGs, those engineered garments. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just because of that yellow on the it's inside. Yellow. It has a little red. They would go. The blue's They're a little, not baby blue, but. The blue's a little off, but. you. Here's what I say would go really good with those. I mean, incredible with those, but they're not Adidas. The off-white Vapor Max with the baby blue laces. Oh, yeah. All white Vapor yeah. Max, the baby blue laces, fire. Yeah. But you almost need a pair of baby blue. Dude, you know what you need? The uncaged colors. Oh, yeah. The uncaged color. With the silver, with the uh, silver hill, cup. hill cup. Huh. What other Adidas would go with that tracksuit? What other Ultra Boost or NMDs? Any other baby? Uh, you, can, you know what else you can go with? Those NM, the glitch, the Data Mosh, NMD, the Data uh, baby blue work. and gray and white. That one would be okay. Yeah, that might work. Hmm. Interesting. God, I can't think of anything because I don't. I don't have anything with that line. They'll let of us know in the comments. Guy. Yeah, for sure. Our subscribers are smarter than us. I was uh, taken back by this because this seems a lot more modern, nice. but it's a nice jacket. Yes, I copped this one because I have a jacket similar to this. This is actually a hoodie. I don't think this is going to be personal. I think I'm going to sell this because I get asked a million times every winter where I got that jacket, and I got it five years ago. This is similar, so I'm just going to sell this probably. This is a dope winter cop for somebody. This looks clean. This is Vans, by the way. This is a Vans jacket. Very nice. There you yeah. go, JJ. Dude, what about that? For those UCLA's, what about the uh, the NMD that had like the, the bricks on the side that actually were 3M? Kind of something like those. Which ones were... Don't you have that pair? That came with the orange and the blue pack? Yeah, but they're not... Uh, they're more teal. Oh, they it's are? It's not baby blue. Yeah. Said, it it's work. not like that's baby blue. That gotcha. Ain't. That's yeah. the only thing I could think of. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I, hey, dude, I convinced this, you on this one. This we, was a, we went hit half on these, didn't we? This, yeah, we, we did. A bundle this deal. was a bundle deal. That's right. That's right. right. And I had to do this because, dude, I love Pat Tillman. Yeah. They have a Pat Tillman Award. Everything that he stood for, he fought for the country. Yeah. He played football like a maniac. Dude, I still remember that photo of him ripping off his helmet and him running, you know, and his hair yeah, oh in yeah. the back, dude. That's just, I mean, Pat Tillman, man. And in the Pat Tillman Award, like, I, I'm just a big advocate for this individual, man. So I got the Arizona State 42. We should Pat probably hang that in the Tillman. studio since it's a small. I know. You can't, f it was tight. You it put fit. it on. It yeah. fit, but dude, if this was a medium um, with the way they did their sizing back then, this would have been sweet, dude. And and this would be, so I, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I can sell it. Yeah. It's fine. But I think this is cool to also maybe display. I think so. I think it's this a keeper. Sweet, I, I remember when you put it on, you're kind of like, ah, I don't know. It doesn't really fit. And I was like, dude, you still have to cop that thing. I know. You've got to cop that thing. And then the guy came up and he gave us a bundle price. And then we were like, all right. We're like, what's, what are we doing? So this is what I got Sorry. out of that bundle. This is a Michigan champion jersey. So this is like the old school where they don't even put the name on the back or anything like that. It's just Michigan. It's got the champ, the big uh, champion tag down at the bottom. Which side is it on? It's on the left. There we go. So you got the big champion tag there. Old school too. I love the way that's written. Old school champion. champion. Rochester, New York. Dude, you could tell this is like a legit practice jersey because you put it on and there's so much room for shoulder pads, mm -hmm. but the torso is like so skinny Thin. and fitted. Like this thing looks like I'm, it seriously looks like I'm uh, Bill Romanowski in this thing. Like I'm just 
trying to stretch it around my torso and then my shoulder pad. Like it, there's so much room up top, but right mm -hmm. here it's so tight. Yeah. Um, really cool though. Nice. Love it. I love, love it, this dude. jersey. It's cool, man. Love I'm not even a Michigan guy. It's not that I don't like Michigan. I just not. I think it's sweet. Yeah. It's sweet, dude. Fits fits pretty uh fits pretty crazy, but I'm gonna rock it. Uh, yes. I shout dude. outs to our guy Mike Pena, right? I love this one. <laughs> this looks like a sweet. Niners jacket. This is a 49ers Coors collab. No, actually, no. It's just a man. This is just a Coors extra gold with the 49er colorway, dude. Just it's a chalk line too. Is it? That's oh, the it thing is. about it. That's Damn. what's so ill about this jacket. This is. A Where chalk are you guys going to get a Coors chalk line? I know, right? That's definitely OG. Yeah, it even says chalk line winning with style. That's so OG. With the Coors, and it's got the red buttons, dude. Well, and, and no that's scratches. The red collar. No None. scratches. None. Not one. We got that from the homie from Division West. This thing is pretty much DS. That's this thing is gorgeous. And it doesn't really fit me. Obviously, it's a size medium, which was pretty decent around the shoulders. I would like a large, but you ain't getting any more length. Yeah. It just is what it is. The length was rough. For the you. length was rough, you know? And that's a but, medium. So, I mean, you'd have to be... You know, Dow's not the biggest guy, but so I mean, it's almost like I want to say kids, but you got to be a small dude to. Fit you got to be a small thing. dude to fit this. Yeah, but this might be a nice display piece for the cast for a little bit as right. well. Oh, I think that is thing right. is just yeah, that thing is sick. Where are you gonna find a coarse chalk line? Things maddening is what it is. Oh, uh, this one right this here. This thing is pretty sweet too, dude. I'm, I, I think I, I think I, may, I might have just overpaid a tad because I put this on. And I told Dal, I was like, I, I got to take this off before these fools see how fire this is looking on me. And they upped the price on me. And what happened? I went over there. He's like, oh, you're going to cop, dude? I saw you over there checking yourself out you in the flexing. mirror. I saw you Feeling yourself. I was like, damn it. I even <laughs> told Dallas, I need to get this thing off. Yeah. So I think I paid. I might have I might have overpaid just a tad, but I love it. I think this might be personal just because the way it does fit perfectly. It is uh, a Mets Daryl Strawberry Cooperstown Collection Mitchell and S pullover, dude. 1983. Super, super sick. You got the classic Mets Royal Blue and Orange Mets logo up front. The collar on it, that kind of towel material. Same thing as the sleeves, matching. Big, big uh, Cooperstown collection. Tag on the bottom there. Really, really cool, man. Yeah, I, like I love that, that dude. I think love the so way sweet. it fit, too. Fit dude, was great. The Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden yeah. escapade. I love it. Oh, this one I couldn't pass up. Oh, this one's too Doesn't much. Fit. I feel like I should. I'll display this one for you as you talk through it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to let's, gift this one to someone. I think. Let's and, do. Uh, let's do the front first. So what do you see on the front? You got the big D, the starter logo, Denver Broncos, old school. Then you got Broncos written up top, the old school oh, font. So. There's a big stain on the front. We're gonna be able to get that out. I'm gonna yeah. wash it with some OxyClean. I'll be able to get that out. What's up? Quick thing about this. Yes. For uh, when we were first starting out, we saw this at one booth, a different and, one, yeah, a different booth. Yeah, and it was, this dude yeah. says you'll never see something like this ever again. <laughs> this is like a one-time yeah. deal. What the hell do we do? <laughs> this guy calling we people out. Freaking Look at see stringer. another one. <laughs> stringer throwing shots. Oh, that's funny. So we did find one. It was in it was in mint condition though. The other one. Yeah, it was in pristine pristine condition. And what was the dude asking for it? Hundred and fifty or two fifty. God, I think it was. I think it was in between that. Maybe somewhere around two. Okay, I think maybe it was two. Yeah. So it's one of two hund. Which this is a badass. I mean, I've never. We were talking. I've never seen anything like this, especially from a big brand like Starter. Yeah. It's got the wide starter tag on it. Uh huh. So it's like a huge wide starter tag. Just says Starter there. This looks like when they first start. When Starter first started. Yeah. Look at this. Then it says the brand's huge at the bottom. Like a banner almost. Yeah. Starter. Underneath all the Bronco stuff. That is super unique to me. And then the quilt pattern in which this thing is sewn. It looks like your grandma homemade this thing. It looks like she took a starter and yeah. turned it into she something added, else. Yeah, she, she added, added her own little personal flair to it. She added some stuff. Yeah. Exactly. So this feels like it's patched on. Yeah. First of all. A little patchwork. This is sweater. This is all fine. This is screen print. Then the bottom. You got the old school... Um, like uh, kind of almost fitted bottom that exactly. has a little bit of stretchy elasticity what is that? At elastic the bottom. bottom that's yeah. what it is tightens up on you a little then as you go up this is like another a different piece of sweater yeah material up top this orange love it then you go up to the collar and it's like the same thing as the elastic down there on the bottom yeah is up around the collar different color orange though yeah then you go to the shoulders you got these like white shoulder pads on the outside sewn, not like, the inside sewn on <laughs> 
and then you got this huge starter patch on the on the side that has nothing to do with the Broncos, but it's in orange and blue. It's got an eagle, a starter logo in the middle, and it says symbol of American sports. Wow. So it's like there was no other this starter is it say no more that's like a military patch it looks like almost it does right so then you go down the sleeve it goes back to the material that's used for the patch over here oh, down man. the sleeves so it's got like a little break and it gives you this almost bed sheet fabric oh yeah 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 then you're back to the sweater again then you're back to the the cuffs, elasticity the cuffs of the elasticity that matches the uh, the neck and the bottom and then you got the starter logo Yep. Above on the right sleeve on your side. I don't have that over here. On the left patch. A left patch. Yeah. Left and sl- all this stuff isn't even the coolest shit. Yeah. None of this stuff even matters. Everything I just told you not doesn't matter. Because let's yeah. look at the back real Hit quick. Hit him with the Metallica. Nothing else matters. No. Th- I don't have the... F- I Damn it. <laughs> look at this, dude. Wow. <laughs> on the back upper, it says mile high. It's got the D logo again. It's got the huge blue stripe. It's got mountains, orange and blue mountains, an orange starter logo, almost like field goal posts uh-huh. down the back. And then the starter banner again, tramp stamped across the bottom. Wow. This thing is incredible, dude. This thing is incredible. So this guy, how much did the guy, 200 earlier, the 200. first guy. Yep. Never see something like it again. 200, it was a large. Was right, the other one a large? Right around the corner, two boosts down. We see this, and it's kind of buried, but yeah. I see it has this stain on the front. Yeah. We're able to talk the guy down. I paid $40 for this joint, dude. Wow. $40. And once I get this stain out, there's no way I could ever wear it. It is so um, small. It's small for you. But, dude, my aunt might be able to fit that. Wow. That might be... That, that might thing be, is so that sick, That might be gift, gift of the decade. That is... Uh, I love that we found that. That's so rare, bro. Like, who... I know. That... Just all the raw I'm materials... Gift I'm gonna gift it to my aunt because it stays in the family. Yeah. That's not leaving the family. I I'm gifting it to my aunt. That way, when she has her time, 100 years from now, I can get it back. I think that's a pretty good idea. That's a great idea. That's sweet. Let me see this thing. Oh, dude. Oh, jeez. Hold, hold this up real quick. This thing. I had... Uh, I had some Wu-Tang protection neck on earlier for uh-huh. your jacket and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got I to gotta throw this down for this, dude. This deserves its own. Oh, dude. Here it is. Are you kidding me? Turn that around right now. Ho, ho. Look at that. Full the lightning striking. Wow. The gong hitting real quick. Where's Paul Bear when you need him? Can we get some smoke machines in the studio, oh, Stringstein? Oh, I don't know. Can we get some flickering of the lights? I want the smoke filling the studio right now. I want a purple. <laughs> Look at Stringstein. <laughs> I'm so dead. Wow. <laughs> he flicked the lights if you're not watching on YouTube. God. Oh, dead. One of these days, we're going to have to be able to pay him. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude. This is the Undertaker Chalkline Fanimation Jacket. Wow. Uh, this thing is fire, man. It's I see. mint condition. I think it was DS until I put it on. Great. That's what he said. <laughs> that's what he did tell me. Yeah. Dude, look at the eye black underneath the Undertaker's eyes. Remember that when he used to have God, that look? Yeah. So it's got the big Undertaker logo on the back. You've got the tombstone. Or not logo. It's got a picture of him. It's got a tombstone. It says Undertaker across the bottom. It's got yeah. lightning striking. He's in the graveyard. And the lightning, stri- the lightning strikes down the sleeves. Super ill, and then on the front, it's just got the WWE logo, but it's the old school like WWF logo, but it's modernized because it doesn't have the F; it just has two W's. And then uh, it's got it says Legends underneath, so it's Dude. got that up on the and on the left or on the right sleeve, it says Rip, another oh, yeah. victim R.I.P. of the Undertaker. R.I.P. Baby, dang, look at that. Oh yeah, same thing on, on this side. Oh yeah, it says something else. Yep. Oh yeah, the same, same exact. Thing. Dope, dude. That thing is. JJ, personal, Undertaker chalk line. Personal copy, yeah. Oh, personal for sure. I mean, I mean, everything I have is for sale for the right price if someone wants to get crazy and really wants it, but it's going to take a lot to take that off my hands. I really I really uh, am a fan of that. The Randy Savage chalk line was similar. They had one just like that, Fanimation, super colorful. Uh, I just didn't want to overpay for it. Yeah. I, the Undertaker one's a little bit more rare. I've seen more of the Savage, and I know I can go get it uh, online or I can get it more places for a better price. So I just don't want to overpay. Is that everything? Yes. That's nice, everything. dude. Look what we did, Dow. I think we did some damage. I think we did pretty good, man. That's some good I think stuff. We got some really good stuff, some stuff we can make some money off of, some stuff we can keep in the family, some very, re- excuse me, rare stuff. The Dude, between the starter hoodie, the, the starter thing there, 
I don't even know what my favorite stuff is. I was going to ask you what your favorite is, but I can't even choose. Uh, I, I know what mine is. What? Mine's the Wu-Tang. Oh, of number like one that, for sure. That's that's huge for me, man. I'm so torn between, dude, I mean, between the Mets, the Taker, the Starter. The Michigan uh, joint's pretty cool. The Michigan joint's cool. The Adidas tracksuit is cool. Uh, there's all the stuff I got. I feel like I can't just go get again. Right. Which I like. Your chalk line, that extra Coors chalk line is. <laughs> it's nice. Huh? Something else. How do you even get Pat Tillman jersey? Uh, yeah, the Pat Tillman. That one's cool. Gosh, man, Every, everything's great, pretty cool. Dude. I really the Newport shirt that we uh, undead stocked for the <laughs> for the cast for the cast. I think it's great. I think yeah, we killed it, dude. Yeah. Could have been, could have been. Uh, I don't. It couldn't have gone much better for us. We spent money on stuff that we couldn't just get again. So right. I like that. Let's move. Um, let's move on from the thrift con. Let me see. Let's go into some NFL, man. Um, NFL preseason. Did you watch anything over the weekend? Is there anything you really want to hit on? Is there anything you really want to talk about too much? I didn't see a ton of stuff that impressed me. I watched a little bit of Kyler Murray. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that they're going to do the at the stat at the snap. Yeah. You never see that in the NFL. I don't know if I've ever seen an offense where every single play, the quarterback's in the gun and he's doing the snap. Yep. Snap clap, snap count, dude. I love that. That's so what's one of my favorite things about college football. Mm -hmm. I just love that. I don't know why. I like that part of the game. I love that they're bringing that to the NFL, and it's it's about time that someone's kind of saying, "Hey, we're going to come in here and do what we want." Yeah, we're not going to follow the NFL protocol that everyone else has been doing. No, I mean, uh, so I like that. Yeah, Daniel Jones obviously orchestrated lit it eight, up, guy. Eight play touchdown drive, uh, capped by a twelve yard score, uh, which was cool. Um, and again, I know it's against second string, third string. I get it. That was cool. Um, the Browns. I know we're going to talk about that here in a second, but Baker Mayfield, you know, his drive was awesome, man. He had one incomplete pass, and then he had an eleven yard, a fourteen yard, twelve yard, and another fourteen yard with. A 24-yard touchdown. He looked great. Very excited. Dude, there's a lot of excitement around Cleveland. And this is, duh. I mean, this this excitement <laughs> has America's been building and building now, and building, yeah. right? Um, but we'll, we'll, we have a unique story that we'll, we'll, ca uh, we'll, we'll, get, uh, we'll get out there here in a few. Um, the Panthers and the Bears, that was a sleep fest. Aside from Ron Rivera icing yet another Bears kicker. So you had Cody Parkey out of the situation, right? Bears yeah. got rid of him. Um, and then you have this Elliot Fry who was attempting a 43-yard, 43-year-old, 43-year-old. 43 43 <laughs> Dude, I feel like Stringer here. What's going on? What's going on? Am I getting a little... I don't know, man. A 43-year-old field goal. It's all right. 43-yard field goal. Okay. And uh, yet again, Ron Rivera, who's kind of been known to ice some kickers and had some success. He even had the Pepsi commercial. Yes. Right? I forgot about so, that. You wow. know, so it's just kind of funny how that works. Yet again, he was able to ice another Bears kicker. Um, so I thought that way. Meaningless. Kind of funny. Completely yeah. meaning, meaningless, you know, in, in uh, preseason. But uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Outside of that, dude, I mean. Not too much, right? Not too much. Well, there's a big story. If you saw the kick return in the Browns game. That was probably the highlight of preseason for me so far. And because I heard this guy, this uh, this gentleman, Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. Mm -hmm. He's a wide receiver. Never Cleveland heard of him. Cleveland Browns. You never heard of him <laughs> Until, before this weekend. Yeah, before right? this weekend, yeah. So I heard of him uh, back in May. He was going through OTAs with the Browns, and he was on the Jim Rome show. And I heard an interview with him, and that's mm -hmm. when I heard about him. And I was like, man, this guy, this is a crazy story. Yeah. And this is back in May. So then the story kind of gets crazier. He makes it to training camp. He makes it through all the LTAs, gets into camp, mm -hmm. trying to make the team. And now he takes a kickoff to the house in the Browns' first preseason game. 86-yard punt team return. In, in Odell Beckham Jr.'s cleats, because yeah. somehow this man lost his cleats. He misplaced him before the game? <laughs> Insane, right? What? Does someone, not, does someone want this guy to fail or what? Someone thinks someone took his cleats? Maybe. Or you think he just misplaced him? Left him in the shitter. I find that obviously pretty crazy know, because right? of this story, right? You know, we look at all this hard work and, you know, we'll, so, we'll, we'll listen to some of the interview, which will kind of bring this all together. I guess it makes more sense for someone trying to sabotage him then. Maybe, but the team loves him. Uh, right. Everyone loves him. They, when he's after he scored the, the touchdown, yeah, they dogpiled yeah. him in the end zone. I mean, it but was like, yeah. So I don't know. So what happened is, uh, if you're unfamiliar with this gentleman... <clears throat> First of all, the name is insane enough. Mm -hmm. Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. Yeah. His parents already had two crazy last names and figured, let's just put them together. <laughs> Might let's, as not, well. let's not just name him Damon Sheehy yeah. or Damon Giuseppe. Let's do both. Let's do Sheehy Giuseppe. Uh, so the guy is an athlete coming up, 
initially how his story starts out, he's supposed to go to Mesa College and play basketball with his brother. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to go there and they're supposed to kind of go and he's going to try to get a scholarship and walk on and play basketball. He gets injured and he decides, I don't really like basketball that much. I want to give this football thing a try. Never has played football at all. So he transfers to Phoenix College, mm -hmm. another community college uh, in Arizona, goes to play um, or goes to try out with them. Ask the coach, what's the schedule? I just want to, he just wants to walk on and try out. Mm -hmm. So he goes in, he gets the tryout and he makes the team as a kick returner. So he starts killing it in the first year. He's on the team. He's just the kick returner. He's doing well. Mm -hmm. The second year, he starts lighting it up, dude. Returns five kickoffs in the first like six weeks for touchdowns. Uh, he's an All-American. He's staying after practice, working on his wide receiver skills because he's trying to better himself as a wide receiver. Sure. For some reason, the coach, the quarterbacks, the team is just not really having it. So he's having all this success as a wide receiver, but no one is putting him on. I'm excuse me as a kick returner, but no one wants to put him on and let him take and help him take the next step, mm -hmm. which seems crazy to me because this dude is as afterburners. He's obviously killing it in the kick return game, super fast. So he's like, "All right, whatever. You guys aren't really messing with me." Kind of just washes out and goes to try out for the CFL in the Arena League, and that's kind of where we'll pick up his story. And uh, I'll let him kind of talk about what happens at that CFL tryout. So mm -hmm. here's Damon Sheehy Giuseppe. Um, and I got a couple sound bites from him. So here's that. The CFL child, uh, that experience was something different. There's a hundred guys that showed up and we all paid a hundred dollars. And, um, after the trial, um, they asked 30 of us to stay after to run more one-on-ones, do more routes. And so after all that, we was there for about six, I want to say probably five hours, just training, working out, just having a tryout. And, um, everything went well. And then afterwards I went up and talked to the CFL scout. And I was just like, uh, so how does, what's the next step from here? And then he really told me there's no next step. We really don't. We've only signed one guy ever off a workout, and we ended up cutting him. And I just kind of was confused. Like, why did we all just pay $100 to work out here if uh, none of us are going to be able to get a chance? And it was just, I was just confused. I was lost. So I ended up going back to Phoenix, drove back to Phoenix, and I was just kind of like, dang, I, I didn't know it was going to be like that. So what's the point of going to the tryout, right? Right. What's the you know, point of the CFL, the coach is like, ah, oh, yeah, we've never even, we don't even hire people. You know, we, we finally hired one guy ever out of any of these trials. Yeah. Like, well, why'd you make me come here and pay a hundred dollars? Like, waste like, waste of a hundred bucks. Waste my time. Waste of my time. So then he hears about a, uh, try a tryout with the Browns. Well, you got to be registered. You got to get the tryout. He kind of goes through the back door. Mm -hmm. This is talking about how his first time he kind of works out with the Browns and Alonzo Highsmith and Alonzo Highsmith is former Miami Hurricane football player, also the head of player personnel right. for the Browns, if you're unfamiliar. So this is him talking about his first work out there and how he goes in. I didn't know too much about Highsmith. I knew a little bit. You know, you hear you hear stories of, of just a great player throughout time, throughout Miami, when he played at Miami, just here. But I didn't know too much of him personally. And so when I just did my research on him, just to make sure I know everything I could know about him. So when I do get there, if any questions come up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the answer. So this is just an open tryout. This is just an open tryout for people to just go and show up. So this is what he's doing, but he's researching who this guy is. So when he goes to him, he says, I can make a good impression. Mm -hmm. I want to know who the guy is that's going to, has the decision to hire or fire me. So that's, that's Alonzo Highsmith. Um, so how he got the workout, check this out. The, my mom, I had my mom how he got to the all her mm -hmm. points she could to get me a flight to, to, to get me a flight to Florida. She used all the points she could, and I didn't have any money after I got there. So I ended up uh, getting stuck there because my mom used her, her money to get me there. And then when I got there, I ended up having $5, and I spent on Chexmas, and I had to wait for the county bus. And I waited there for three hours, and someone um, seen me waiting there forever and just ended up loaning me $5 so I could get on the county bus and, and get all the way to Aventura Mall and then walk to the workout. Dude. Wow. Is this a guy that's trying to go get it or what? Man. I mean, everyone keeps telling him no from – College to the the college team doesn't want to doesn't want to let him be a wide receiver. Goes to the CFL, the Arena League, can't get on, can't join a team. Goes to a Browns tryout, shows up, can't even barely get there, bro. Takes his mom's points to try to maximize the money everything to get she everything. Had. That's so crazy, dude. Like, and then he goes into the workout and they're not gonna let him in. They're not gonna let him try out. So he acts like he knows Alonzo Highsmith. Highsmith. Check this out, dude. Check this out. I just pulled that off from when, when like, just being in door-to-door -door sales is kind of just you got you to gotta rebuttal on the spot and just think of something quick to make something look 
uh, more comfortable or make someone feel more comfortable. So I just did that as fast as I could. When I seen him walk in, I was like, yeah, I think that's him. That's got to be him. And I just went over, introduced myself, shook his hand, and everything went well. Dude. Wow. So he was a door-to-door salesman selling ADT yeah. back in the day. That's what he's talking about, door-to-door sales. Though. If you read up on his story, that's kind of where he learned. He said how to talk to people and how yeah. to just kind of finesse. How to work rebuttals. Finagle your yeah. way in. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then he got to work out for Highsmith. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of here's here's what happened and then the follow-up. He called me and asked me, um, he was just asking me kind of questions about myself and then asked me my, how old I was. Um, just things like uh, football wise and asked me when I'm going to be ready to run again and I told him uh, whenever whenever you need me to run again I'm ready to run and a couple days later he ended up uh, they, the Browns flew me out to Cleveland to run again and work out again and everything after that was just a blessing dude how cool is that man dude and did did you see what he actually ran on the 40 yard dash 4-3 something he ran, ran a 4-3-8 look at that Four three eight, dude. Uh, so when he convinced the exec, obviously Highsmith, uh, he he ran a split uh, four three eight forty yard dash, which was good enough to get him to the camp invite, and then ran uh, once again. So pretty cool, dude. On that, the uh, the punt return was on a fourth and four against Washington the other night preseason. There was like three minutes left in the game. Catches the ball around his own fifteen or so, and uh, this is how that sounded. It is Sheehy Giuseppe feeling it inside the 15, and he gets one block, and he's Go. gone, and he is gone. Burn it Taking it the distance wow. for the touchdown is Sheehy Giuseppe no on blocks. a terrific special teams play, and now Freddie can smile because he has seen all of the units <laughs> do their thing. And do you I think, love the celebration, do you think they're happy Whole for team Sheehy dog or not? Yeah. Yeah, he is a, awesome. he's a Everyone team. on the team, dude. God. Everyone on the team dogpiling me in zone, coach going crazy. I'm pulling for this kid, man. I hope he makes the team. I don't Same. know what the – outside of Odell and Jarvis, I don't really know what the wide receiver room looks like. Mm-hmm. What's that little kid, uh, Antonio Caldwell, Call. the little slot receiver? But Call, I don't know – Or is it Callaway? Call. Antonio Callaway. Callaway. Callaway, Callaway yep. you're right. Mm-hmm. So, man, it's – I don't know what that room looks like, but dude, if he's if he if he can just get on like Tyreek Hill, yeah, just get on the team as a punt returner. Tyreek sure. wasn't used to the weapon he is now. Initially, right. he was brought in as a fast guy yeah. that had potential as a wide receiver, kind of like a Devin Hester. Exactly, Devin Hester <laughs> never fully matriculized. He was right. still, well, he started out as a corner. Remember sure. that? Yeah, and they moved him to wide receiver and all the uh-huh. gimmick stuff online or um, on offense. But he was always known for a punt returner. Always That's known, it. and that was his game. He's, yeah. he did okay on offense, but he never broke out sure. big time. You know. Uh, but this guy, man, never know. He could be the next Tyreek Hill. He could be. Speaking of that, did you see McCole Hardman, the little rookie they picked up over there in Kansas City? Uh, he got I heard about him. Yeah, oh, dude. I didn't get to watch those fucking guys. Yeah, They're killing me, dude. They don't, it don't even matter if they lose Tyreek Hill. They got another one. Yeah. How are you going to give Pat Mahomes two of those guys on the outside? Yeah. Or we're going to have to just put two guys in the end zone. Yeah. Those guys are going to run right by. I, we're just going to have to put both safeties way <laughs> back and just hanging in the end zone. I saw Des Bryant's warning. You better watch out for them, Kansas City folks. Oh, dude, it's. I saw his yeah his little social. You put <laughs> not only not only do you put that kind of speed there, then you you put Mahomes behind center with that kind of gun, you're in so much trouble, so over, dude. Yeah, those guys. I think I'm just praying that their O line and their defense are going to be terrible. Yeah, because out outside of that, ugh, they're dangerous. Dude. I think they need to make a uh, <laughs> a John Elway rifleman poster of Mahomes. And I'm buying that, it. Right. I'm buying it. <laughs> we'll <laughs> with put his, it, we'll put it back here. And, yeah. and the footballs and yeah. some holsters. We'll put it back here in the cast. <laughs> rifleman. We'll have an Elway and a Mahomes. <laughs> oh, you hilarious. The rifleman. Oh, dude, Mahomes would be in full. Um, No, he'd have to do something in Chiefs yeah. gear. He'd have to Ooh, be. I know. Elway would be the rifleman. He'd be the. Ooh. He'd be the, the tomahawk. He'd have the, to have like the tomahawks in his pocket yeah, or some something kind ready of, to rock. He'd be throwing axes. He's dude, had a, he'd he'd have his, in, his Indian head garb on and the whole thing. The whole deal. Yeah. I don't know enough about Chiefs culture to get same correct with the lingo. Yeah. But you're a big fan, though. Oh, well, <laughs> same. I was, I was a fan of their money that I made on from last year, no doubt. Uh, all right. So that that story was cool. Mm-hmm. I wanted to share that with you guys. Let's finish up the football stuff with uh, this Antonio Brown. Let me play this sound clip first, and then we'll go from there. We'll go from there because kind of this kind of lays out the situation. It's, it's Are they bringing back the leather uh, helmets? We'll see. Let me let me play this for you. There's going to be general managers that want to know that that's not going to happen. Bro, it could, bro listen, I don't even have to play football if I don't want, bro. I don't even need the game. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to prove nothing to anyone. If, I, if they want to play, they're going to play by my rules. If not, I don't need to play. 
You want the game now? No, I don't. I, I, I mean, okay? I, obviously, I want the game, but I don't need the game. It's a different. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to play for no one. Like, I'm happy. You see this? It's paid off cash. I don't owe no one. Mm -hmm. I'm a millionaire, bro. I'm an entrepreneur. Like, I don't have to prove no one anything. You know what I mean? Like, I never quit and miss a game ever. I check my record. They right. know my background. But that's what the NFL is, is organization. Organizations can create narratives and lower your value based on your position. But you can't lower my value. I'm Antonio Brown. I come from somewhere. I stand for something. I showed you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If someone don't believe that, perfect. Don't call me. Like, it's okay. Like, right. I'm perfectly fine with walking away fully healthy or whatever. So if you ain't got the demands to meet the demands, make it move. I'm mm -hmm. not just a young player searching for something to make a difference. I already made a difference. Mm -hmm. The Steelers probably gave me five contracts, including extensions, almost 100 million and, and change. I'm 30 million dollars up cash. Like, what do you, what do you want to tell me? It don't matter. I don't even have to play. My dad was great. If I retire right now, I think I'm great. Yeah. There you go. Wow. So. This is all about Antonio Brown. We know what the we talked about the cryotherapy last week. Yeah. We talked about the frozen feet. If you're unfamiliar with the situation, now it's a helmet situation. <laughs> he had a Steelers helmet. He was using his Steelers helmet in practice. They had painted it like the Raiders. The NFL told him he couldn't use the helmet. He got caught using the helmet painted. Yep. And so now and the NFL told him, hey, can't use this helmet. Yeah. Took it away. He said he doesn't like the new helmet because he can't see. His line of sight isn't as clear. Yeah. He can't see as well. It affects his vision. So Limits his vision. He said he wants to wear and he's not going to play unless he can wear the old helmet. That's right. where I'm at right now. That's as caught up as I am. Well, and I will tell you, so the NFL addressed it today. Okay. Uh, so today being Monday. Uh, and this is from Brian McCarthy. Um, and it's at NFL PR guy. The player can't, and they didn't even dress him as Antonio. Okay. It just said, they just. Well, because there's a lot of players having issues with this. Right. Brady came out this morning and said, did you hear Tom Brady came no. out this morning and said, I don't like this new helmet either. Wow. It affects my vision. So it's not just Diva Brown. Tom Brady said, right. I'm not a fan. Because he's been, he's one of the athletes that's being forced to switch helmets as switch well. Switch helmets as well. Because he used the old style. So maybe that's why the NFL did this. I thought it was just like they didn't want to name names. But anyways, they, they no, said. No, no, no. I think there's multiple people. Interesting. Including Brady. I didn't unhappy hear about with that. the helmet. So or this is having to switch helmets. This is the quote from so the player can't practice or play in games with equipment that's not approved. It doesn't play or excuse me, if he doesn't play or practice, he is in breach of his contract and doesn't get paid. NFL policy is that the helmets have to hold or have to be certified by N O S C A E whoever that is. So whoever they certify the helmets, that's the company. Um, they don't certify equipment that's uh, that's older than 10 years. So it's a certification issue. It's a safety issue. It's a precaution thing. The NFL obviously is way, way in the limelight with concussions and all this, right? We had that Will Smith movie, you know, all about concussions, and that brought up a bunch of stuff. The No Fun League is really just trying to protect their brand, their face. I totally get it. But when it comes to comparing the helmets and what was, you know, the last 10 years versus this, you know, new helmet, what the certification, what the parameters are, what the dimensions are, I have no idea. But long story short, um, it sounds like uh, Antonio Brown is trying to take this into, you know, lawsuits and that whole thing. But that's the latest that I've seen is that, that uh, the NFL came out and, you know, said this and addressed this. So Brady, here's the thing about Brady. Uh, Brady had a similar helmet issue in 2018, but he, along with Brown and others, were given one year waiver to continue to wear their preferred equipment. So Brady wore the same helmet last year. This is his first year wearing the other one too, because he chose one. to yeah. use the waiver and, and figure waiver. it out after next season. Wow. But you know, just like anything you're, you don't want to do, you're going to have to do it at some point. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're at. It's just at a crossroads. Wow. Um, here's another thing too. Now the, Brown's, uh, okay, here we go. What's wrong with Brown's current helmet? Essentially nothing. Brown has been wearing the shut air advantage that is preferred. That has been his preferred headgear since 2009. This helmet was popular among receivers in 2014, but since then players have moved on, leaving Brown as the last remaining player, last remaining receiver trying to hold on to this helmet. The shut helmet has not been found to be unsafe, but just too old. Kind of like what you talked mm -hmm. about. Brown's shut advantage helmet was not found to be unsafe in helmet testing based on the current standard, but you, as you said, 10 years old is too much. Yeah. 
The shut air advantage was discontinued in 2011 as a helmet. Theoretically, Brown could find a new inbox shut helmet, which was manufactured in 2011, and ask the association to test it, but whether one exists is unclear. Ah, so that's so because in theory, because in theory, we're talking 2021. Right, he can still get away with this. Maybe right. that's the loophole. Right, but finding a DS. How one, crazy is this shit? Wow. How crazy is this shit? God, I thought he was being a diva at first. This but, is wild but I get stuff. It. This is wild stuff. But meanwhile, the Steelers. How are they feel? They laughing in their they 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 taking this to their graves and just laughing their asses off. Have to be. It's pretty quiet Have at their be. training camp, from what I hear. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what happens here now? He, okay, so if he's under contract and he just retires, what he just gives? Does he give the current money back? He's already been paid for this season. Well, what I wonder is and move you on. You know. The guarantee that they have. That's what but, I'm saying. But is that guarantee based off of him playing at least a game? Or what does Sun that look games, like? Yeah, what's I what's guaranteed money? How many games do you have to play to make that guarantee? I don't know what that looks like. All the, uh, yeah, we need to dig into, well, I don't know if they get that logistics of the contract are out in public like right. that. Right. That's interesting, That'd be interesting questions, though. though. Yeah, dude. Tough stuff. So here's my here's where I take this, and we'll kind of wrap up here. Hard knocks tomorrow night. We're going to talk a ton about that on Thursday, probably mm-hmm. recap it. If they do not pull the curtain back tomorrow night and yeah. show us everything that's going on with Brown, with the feet, with yeah. all the info, I want everything. I want real info. I, I want, want to, I want to hear the coaches talking. Yes, I don't want I speculation. Want an, I don't want BS. Yeah. Give me the real info. And if you do not do that tomorrow night, hard knocks, I'm going to lose a lot of respect for you guys as a reality show. Okay. There's a ton of reality shows we know are not reality. You guys are one of the last that I look at as a re, as a real reality show. A non scripted. Non scripted. Whatever's happening is happening. Coaches aren't cutting players for your show. They're right. cutting players because that's what happens on the team and you're covering it. Right. That's a reality show to me. And I love that about Hard Knocks, but man, I'm going to lose a lot of respect if Hard Knocks does not show us what's up tonight. Totally or agree. Or tomorrow night. Totally agree. I'm I'm looking to get I'm looking I'm looking to have them peel back layers. I want to see things that we've never seen. Um, you know, I want the transparency, and that's something that I expect. No doubt. I, I would like to think that That's why H- we're watching the show. I think the HBO crew and HBO and, and all their docuseries and everything behind it, I hope they're having parties right now. I hope they're cracking open the champagne bottles. I hope they're having, you know, the oysters and everything and just yeah. you know, ready to go because they're that excited about this. This is an opportunity to really let the people in. And this is awesome. I hope, hope we they get do it let well. in. That's what I'm saying. I don't want any more speculation. I don't want any more reporters. I don't want any more. I'm hearing. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. I'm hearing. I don't want any more of that. I want what's going on from the inside of the locker room. Yeah. Like you said, I want to see. Like you covered Hugh Jackson's mom dying mm-hmm. and then him getting fired a few days later last year. Right. I want to see the same thing. I want to see. I want to see that same stuff. I want to see you guys. I want to see cameras in the office. Mm-hmm. I want to see John Gruden on the phone talking to Brown's agent. Yeah. Or talking to the other coaches about what the hell's going on with Brown. The NFLPA. I want to know what NFL. Gruden's really saying. What is he? Is he saying, what is going on with this credit therapy, man? We got to get this guy in here, man. This guy's <laughs> got to be in here. This Brown's really yeah. driving me up the wall, man. Yeah. You know, what is he going to say? This, this, I want to see that shit. God. What? I wish I could do that. That impersonation was pretty good. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. It's my first time doing it here on the show. I'm kind of yeah. new to it, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Thanks, JJ man. doesn't even know he thinks it's funny. <laughs> do you know Gruden? No. Oh, geez. You don't know about Gruden Grinders? <laughs> no, I do. Uh, Go watch. Uh, oh, did you watch Hard Knocks last week? I don't have HBO. Dallas, he's coming over. <laughs> Come over, man. <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> Hey, you guys kind of live near each other, don't you, man? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll grill up some meat, man. <laughs> I can't uh, do it. That's so good. Yeah, thanks. That's a good impression, man. <laughs> Damn it. So anyways, I want to see all that. I want to see Gruden talking to him. I want to see him criticizing. I want to see what he's really thinking and what he's saying about Brown yeah. behind the scenes. And yeah. is he like fed up with it or is he? Uh, does he have his receivers back? Because yeah. in my opinion, for, not about the cryo, but in the helmet situation, you're stuck together, dude. You should have your players back. I wouldn't be going against your player right now. Mm-hmm. I would be going to bat for your player with the league and having his back because you guys are in it. The last thing you need, especially with a guy like Antonio Brown, you don't need to be losing Antonio Brown, and you don't need to be thinking that he do, that uh, he's not. You don't have his back. That you're not on his team. That it's him against the league and not us against the league. Well, and I think so. They've, there's already been stuff that Gruden says. He's he he basically came out and said, "Hey, I support this guy." 
Uh, I wish you could Good. read this in your impersonation. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I support this guy. I think that's what uh, needs to be said, Gruden said. I don't know what anybody's writing or what anybody thinks, but this foot injury uh, wasn't his fault. Uh, this was a total accident. It really wasn't the, his fault, uh, and it was a serious injury. And now with the helmet stuff, I know people are joking about it, but it's really not a laughing matter. This guy is hurt with his feet. He's worried about his you know, his seeing and, and hindering all this. Like He literally has come to bat for Brown. I'm not reading the whole thing. Just right. kind of, you know gave a little snippet of it but it sounds like he's coming to the aid of brown and whatever his decision good, good, is good. um so it sounds like he supports good. him so i want to see if this aligns right you know and then he also says um he has a strong feeling about what he's worn on his head and we're supporting him gruden continued we understand the league's position as well so we're in a tough spot we hope antonio is here soon because he's, he's exciting to be around i'm excited i've got some plays for him i hope we can start calling them look at that so you know, I like the said the team would support Brown, whatever the decision is. Good. They should. So, or whatever his decision is. Excuse me. Good. They should. They should. There you go. All right, let's move on there. We'll get the, hopefully get the rest of the info on hard knocks. Uh, let's jump into sneakers and fashion, man. Oh, I forgot. You copped the Michelob at the thrift. I did. The shirt you have on. Yeah. So people have seen that. And then I, I mentioned cool. this earlier, the Marlboro Ducati racing yeah. shirt. Looks like I'm part of the pit crew up in here. Looks like I'm about to... Uh, <laughs> I'm about to go out there and change some tires. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I'm about to give me the gas can. No gas. tire, no tire fire that you're wearing, man. That's that's a clean look. This is probably for Ducati. Is that they don't do? Uh, do they do long racing or is it like drag racing? All shit? all sport bikes. All I think. Yeah, I don't okay. Know. Yeah. Okay, so it's all all types. They're of doing racing. those racing, man, where you lean so far that like those racers' the knees knee pads? are like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like, yep. Crazy. Rip all right, your kneecap off. first shoe. So we got to kind of make this quick because I got to get back to work. Oh yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I got a visit from the DM today. Oh geez, Dal. Oh, below, not oh, good. Jeez, <laughs> JJ, you're gonna have to grab the sneak or Dal. You got the, you got my sneaks, JJ. Uh, Can you find them somewhere? Yeah. I don't know where they're at. The obsidians are somewhere. Go ahead, Dal. All right. So first shoe of the day. This is one that I was able to cop at ThriftCon yesterday. I was super excited to see it, and I know this brand has been with Payless before. Yeah. Um, this brand is, uh, you know, what they would say in modern day, below not good. But <laughs> in the '90s, this was a staple, and it's funny. Because now we have the staple pigeon on them. Nice. So this was a collab with uh, Airwalk and the staple pigeon. Um, this was an exclusive, uh, exclusive sold shoe from Urban Outfitters, and I believe the retail price when this did come out with Urban uh, Outfitters was only twenty bucks. Nice. It was a good price. No box, dead stock on these. Um, they do run a little bit long. I'm a hard, hard ten, and these are a nine and a half, and I can still fit fit in them just fine with with the insole in um but a great little shoe man some nice suede on them uh yeah, actually you know, sh so sh half half down should be what you go if you're buying is, them yeah half down is it's what actually you should end up being go. perfect for you yeah nice. but uh airwalk How you got sick. the pigeon on the got back the little staple pigeon on the back you got the airwalk branding you got the super nice gum sole uh that is super great for skating just a nice cool very basic bit shoe yeah, dude, I like this. I a was lot. super happy to get those, man. Thirty-five bucks, no box, still dead stock. I don't know if I keep them. I don't know what I do with them quite yet, but I just couldn't walk away from them. Yeah, I think these are. I think this is a super cool pickup because you just look at them, and you think there's some standard Airwalks, but then you yeah. see the Staple Pigeon, and you're like, "What the hell?" You're like, "Oh, those are actually dope. Little yeah. little dope collab." I mean. We all know kind of what that means. I like how this back, it feels like a uh, grip tape like yeah, the top of a uh, yeah, board. It is. Dope. Really dope. It is. So it's got some cool I think different these are hits. Cool, man. I think they're pretty sweet though, but happy to have them, man. Uh, not the coolest, not the dumbest shoe ever. I just think uh, it's not a shoe that you see uh, on the daily. And I believe these either came out uh, 2016 or 2017. Oh, okay. Very, very limited at that time. So, all right, we'll move along into uh, these Jordan 1s. I've already looked at them, so go ahead and you can kind of pick them up and peep them there. Um, this is a pair I think you're passing on, right? Jordan ones. Oh yeah, yeah. I know what these are. Yep, these came from the homie early. Yeah, they so, did. So uh, August 31st is actually when is they dropped. Still the hard date. Yeah. Yep. That's what, so I what I've saw. seen. So, I mean, what do you think? First impressions. Um, I know. It's, I don't think it's a shoe you're going for because you don't like the colorway. Is that why? Or is yeah, it the quality? Yeah, I don't. I don't like because the quality's not bad. When we talked about baby blue, yeah. you know, with your tracksuit, I, oh. I don't. I don't. I don't really do baby right. baby blue. Just like you don't do royal. You'll yeah, do navy. Uh, I'm not a royal, but guy. royal is is not kind of your fan. So this has the navy and the obviously the baby blue. So it's just really not a part of my kind of mo. 
Um, that being said, what I do like about this though, um, I like how they made the toe box actually more of a cream yeah, versus yeah. a white. Yep. So I like that because that adds uh, a nice element because your actual midsole looks to be white in this case where yeah. we've seen a lot of creams in the past, right? Yep. With some of the Jordan 1 releases. So it's kind of opposite. They did yeah. white up on the leathers and cream, or uh, I'm sorry, cream on the leathers and white on the midsole. I would say Spider-Man 1 quality is what I would compare it to. Yeah. Which I think was pretty good. Not awful. Not not incredible, but not... Yeah. Not, That's uh, kind of what I'm seeing. I remember the shadow ones, I think, were better than that. Yeah, the shadows are definitely better than this. You know, this, but that's going to give you Spider-Man quality. Rookie of the year, Spider-Man, around mm -hmm. that same kind of... Maybe Rookie of the Year might be just a tad better than Spider-Man, but yeah. they're close. And they're a little different, yeah. Yeah, I like I like this shoe, man. I, I think for me, if I if I did get these, you got to go with the baby blue laces. I would probably do the dark on one and the baby blue on the other one, mm -hmm. kind of mix it up that way. But that baby blue will help bring out the contrast because if you, you've got so much navy on the front that if you have the the laces navy I, I think i think you're missing the boat a little bit on that but i like the cream tongue i like the cream toe box i like the white midsole uh again the colorway just isn't isn't to die for for me so i don't have to have it is this personal for you yeah i like them yeah, yeah. i think uh you're down for them huh yeah i like them i think i'm gonna i'm gonna rock them i might switch out the laces um i might keep those baby blues dead stock i got a couple pairs that i got yeah. one of the uh off whites says shoelaces on them oh yeah yeah i might switch them out just for that yeah, just that'd for, be cool just a little extra, yeah, extra same, swag. same blue, but just, yeah, you know. Yeah, I think that might be pretty cool. So. But yeah, no, I, I like the shoe. I think it's a well-done shoe. I think the quality is, you know, middle of the pack. Um, but, you know, if you love these colorways, I mean, yeah, I think I think maybe some people have to have it. For me, it's just, I, there are so many Jordan 1s, dude, and this color just was not appealing to me at all. It was just like, oh, it's cool, another Jordan 1, like a lot of people think. So, And that's just because of the colorway for me. I'm going to put out a uh, an early video on these that will be coming this week, as well as the Travis Scott uh, low, real versus fake. Yeah. Hopefully that's up today. Keep That'll your eyes peeled for that days. one. Yep. That one's already filmed, ready to go. I just got to edit it all together, which I have the footage and everything. Those ones, I can, it's not going to be a hard video to do. Uh, just got to get with you to shoot the on feet sometime. So let's do it. We'll plan on that. I know. Are you editing the cast today? Yes. Sick. Yes. Nice. Back with That's the computer cool. work. Everything got like, I updated all my programs, got so everything ready to reloaded. Go. The computer's sitting there. So in theory, everything should go well. So I'm just praying that everything does. <laughs> nice. All right. Oof. Well, I'll be hitting you with a message at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Let me know I'm editing the cast together, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be late. <laughs> so be on the lookout for that if you follow me on Twitter or IG. Uh, I'm just kidding, JJ. Let's go into YouTube comments. Finish up the show here. Dal's got to get the hell out of here. He's got a DM visit. He's yeah, getting in trouble. Good luck with that, man. Oh, good Ugh. luck, Dal. Oh, bad. Good luck, Dal. You're screwed, bro. Oh, bad. <laughs> Dal, At least you're quitting, bro. man. <laughs> oh, this is bad, bro. This is bad. All right. YouTube comments. Where's the news at? Oh, man, we got quite a few. I got some new cats in here this week, too, I think. Welcome. I didn't get a chance to read through these first. Dude, I was, like I said, I was putting together vanities. We were busy we, we were busy. Thrifting. Conan. Jay Nasty, the Mad City Madman. Yo, what is up, homies? That would be the shit, though. Take a vacation and spend at least one night hanging out with the ladies. Raid some local beach with a bunch of the most underrated bad mofos dropping gems. A bunch of underrated fantasy experts. Underrated love doctors led, <laughs> led by Dr. Dow Pal. <laughs> underrated sneaker lovers. Underrated advice givers. Mr. Unsolicited, LMFAO. Very funny, Jay Nasty. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I got lucky with that, by the way. I didn't know. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> going. Real laughter. <laughs> we could even bring the thumbs down organizer. Wow. That is always thumbs down on the cast. Yeah. I'll pay for the, I'll pay for the flight. Drop that mofo in the rear naked troke and transition into a triangle with my, without my feet ever touching the ground. Mm. Telling you dog, I got fucking cat like reflexes. That's it. <laughs> That's where okay. it is. <laughs> Jay nasty. It's wow. not the same without the shot. I'm sorry guys. I know. What do we give? Um, what do we give each comment? There's nothing we can give, huh? Yeah, no, you don't want to do the Foo Fighters. There's no. nothing we can give. No. Uh, Dirty DJ, I'm sorry, man. Um, the gunshots are bare. God, I feel bad. Yo, another fire cast, fellas. The Dow clip about getting kicked off the cast is amazing. <laughs> it definitely should have been a, should be a staple on the show. 
I already reached out to Dal, but wanted to say congrats to him on taking the plunge with doing the cast full time. Can't wait to see where the cast goes over the next year. The sky is the limit. Let's go. He continues along. Man, I always thought AB was a little bit off of his rocker, but I can definitely see him saying he isn't wearing shoes slash slippers provided at the cryo because he's a Nike guy and feeling he is too good for them. Mm. Now, there's the, there's the whole helmet drama. Below, not good. Fantasy season is right around the corner. I can't wait to, for the fantasy talk. I have trouble keeping up with three, and you guys do six to seven. He's talking about leagues. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Can't wait for the fantasy show. Just found out I get first pick in my total redraft PPR league. Saquon is the, is the clear-cut one, but what about Mahomes at 20 or 21? Too early. No, never too early for Pat Mahomes. I'll take Pat Mahomes in the first round this year. There's no one else like him. There's not anyone else playing like him. There's no one else running that offense like him. Pat Mahomes, dog. Yeah. Pat Mahomes is a first rounder for me. Absolutely. I don't. I don't think you need to wait to 2021. If he's dude, I, he might be gone. Dirty yeah. DJ. He's he's going to be the Aaron Rodgers of the last few seasons. Yeah, dude. I mean, and he's and Rodgers let people down. Yeah. Like yeah, I said, yeah I, I've said I don't think the Chiefs are going to be as good as last year, but it doesn't mean I don't think they're going to do damage doesn't mean I don't think Mahomes is going to light it up yeah fantasy wise especially I just don't think they make the AFC championship uh if he finishes up keep up the good work guys love the real versus fake discussion on the TS lows loved both of the ones but I'm staying away due to the fact that the fakes are so good and I will not be able to tell unless I get them from someone I trust for a fair price. Can't mm -hmm. risk paying the going rate and possibly getting a fake. I went to the sneaker show this weekend. One seller had the glows and the synths in my size. Both had StockX tags, which scared me away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyone have a friend or anyone have the glow V2s in an 11 or 11 and a half? Hit me up. Oh, and as you guys know, autocorrect isn't my friend with yeah. the laughing face. <laughs> like it. Nice. Thank you, Dirty DJ. St. Skinner, another fire cast, fellas. He's always in here. Love St. Skinner. Let me like these as I go by. Let me like these for y'all, fellas. Uh, fail Beast. Actually, no. Um, I skipped too far. Danny B. The StockX QR code throwing y'all into a twilight loop. Maybe those fakes are actually real with the brain exploding emoji and the alien head. <laughs> wow. Not possible, Danny B. It was. Dude, that was crazy. I didn't realize I have... I've never scanned a StockX tag before last show. Mm -hmm. Same. And I, I didn't either. know why the fakes was taking me to the StockX app and why the reels was taking me to a phone number. Mm -hmm. Really weird, but that's what happened. Michael Scott up next. Great cast as always. Franchise the TS1 highs came with the black label, not the white one like on the lows. Mm -hmm. I copped a size 8 from the Travis... Uh, from Travis Scott website and a size 10 from sneakers. Both of them came with the black label. JC has a video from SneakerCon Dallas where he buys a lot of TS1 highs. All of them have the black label. So don't know where you saw that the highs came with the white label. Just misspoke. Honest mistake. Yeah. Misspoke on it. Dal, I have a question for you about the CBD for dogs. Mm -hmm. My dog gets very anxious and stressed out when I take him to the vet or the groomers. Mm -hmm. The vet gave me some pills for the anxiety to give him before I take him to the vet, but they don't work. Mm -hmm. I've been wondering if the CBD would help with that. I'm asking because I heard in the past cast that you used it on your dog. I don't know if it was for a different reason, but just curious. Keep up the great work, guys, and see you on the next one. Appreciate it. Yeah. What do you got, Dale? Uh, absolutely. The CBD is, you know, even for my anxiety, Robin takes it as well. Uh, dude, for our dogs, I first tested it on the dog that passed, uh, my dog Fender, who passed, uh, you know, January 2018. He, Bulldogs and boxers are notorious to have a little bit of that especially boxer breeds um and he was he was he was off his rocker a little bit with anxiety mm -hmm. you know and you know if he saw something he wanted to go get it he, he, you know he heard something he had to go get it the cbd really really helped tame uh, a lot of those uh needs that he that he would have and and really kind of brought him down to a level that he was actually a little bit more tolerable and easy to deal with i would never take him into mass public places that kind of stuff but when we did these dog events at parks and things like that Dude, always had to dope him up with a little bit of CBD, dude, and really kind of brought him down to what a more normal dog would be like. Mm. So it definitely, definitely helps. Uh, plus, it's all natural versus pills. Who right. knows what you're getting from the vet? They can get addicted to them, all these different things, man. So uh, I would definitely, definitely try a little CBD. Dope. Put a little in their, in their bowl, you know, with their food. Give them a little uh, dapper right in their mouth. Whatever you want to do, but definitely give it a shot. Dope. Thanks for coming through, man. Michael uh, Michael Scott, new commenter on the cast. I haven't seen him in here before. I only see yeah. him in the office. I uh, <laughs> nice. I uh, yeah. I shit the bed on the on the label thing, man. 
I someone told me on my story that was the same. I don't have the highs. I never was interested in the highs. I never watched a review right. on the highs. I didn't want the this highs. This guy got them from TravisScott.com and, so, uh, and sneakers. Who yeah. is this guy? Magic yeah. Mike. Killed it. So I just misspoke. I wish you could give you a gunshot. Sorry, Doug. I sh- uh, Fail Beast up next. Interesting comparison on the Travis Scott lows. I got it wrong. I got it wrong on your IG story. Bloody China. Spec knockoffs <laughs> are getting good. Yeah. Personally, I'm old school. I do my uh, I do my SB in lows and Jordans in highs. Never the other way around. I recently watched Hard Knocks after your, re- your review. Hard to follow since I know nothing about the NFL, who the players are, or anything about the team. But to their credit, the show was entertaining and had and had been edited so a non-fan like myself can hope they succeed. Although the rookie number 24 comes across like he's going to be high maintenance, mm-hmm. good to see <laughs> <laughs> Good to see him. The rookie number 24. <laughs> That'll be, uh, what is it, Jonathan Abram? Abram. Uh, good to see the family vibe in the t- uh good sorry good to see the family vibe the family vibe in the team classic water boy calves roasting was gold yep dude i totally agree with you i think is it jonathan abram or john or i don't i might be saying it wrong abram is his last name abram, that yep. kid is annoying as shit i was like please get the camera away from this guy stop following this guy around that guy is gonna you're totally right phil beast he's gonna be high maintenance he's gonna annoy me throughout the episodes but i could tell you what the kid's a thumper i watched the raiders preseason game the other night that guy was all over the field in the secondary first quarter when he was in there he enjoys contact. He, he plays hard. He's just, he's one of those, you know what he is though? He's one of those guys that just lives to annoy people. Mm-hmm. Even when Gruden, he was annoying Gruden. Gruden was letting him know he was annoying him by continually lighting up their own players in practice when it was walkthrough and it was not full contact. And Gruden let him know, hey, you're getting on my ner- nerves here. You're annoying me. Oh, do I get cast going in the back? You got cast going on the back. Oh, sorry, guy. Oh, dude, you My don't bad. think you don't think he's going to be mic'd up, dude? Especially when they go to L.A. and or when they when they play the scrimmage <laughs> yeah. against the Rams. Right. Oh, you, fail beast, watch out! Right, he finishes up. <laughs> Finally, you need to give my guy Dow some fucking credit. He turned the doghouse into his whole house, <laughs> <laughs> fostering puppies Shit. and all that. Dow needs those walk the dog SBs. I do with the laughing emoji. I do. Dow, why do you not have? Those? I'm going to get those, dude. I got to get those Dallas. before I quit. I got to get them. You also got to get the red Supreme Director's chair at some point. Oh yeah. Water on Mars. Why isn't your black one in here in the cast? I would use it at the crib for when I'm sh- shooting those videos. But yeah, we'll, we'll get it over here. Uh, water on Mars. What y'all think about switching the view and the thumbnail for the for the vids, man? The way we see the kicks better. That way we see the kicks better. So I don't think he likes it from top to bottom, like maybe more on a neutral. I don't for the know thumbnail? I don't, oh, I don't know. What, what do y'all think about switching the view for, in the thumbnail oh, okay. for the vids, man? So he wants to see the shoes better. Why Why do you care about what the shoes look like in the thumbnail? You're going to watch the video and you're going to see him. I don't know. Okay. Here's what I will apologize though for. Last episode, JJ was super late on switching the camera. So during the real versus fake segment, there was a portion where I only had one camera. So it was on you for like by yourself for like a good four or five minutes while we're talking about the shoe over here and it's all the stuff's going on, but I didn't have any wide angle. I didn't have anything else to show you guys. Gotcha. Like I'm, I'm showing the camera over here, this, but this is dead. I got my fame. Yeah. So it's like it, that was just, there was nothing I could do guys. So when that happens, I apologize. So I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Maybe we didn't do a good, it sucks. The camera died during the real versus fake. Cause that's the part where you really want to see all the angles and what the hell's going on. Yeah. So it just, it was bad timing, but, um, Mike, the man, AKA boost dad, Canada, mm. Great cast, boys. Love the content on this one. Very cool. I'm also really enjoying the premium stuff on Patreon. Looking forward to the final collection vid. Wow. Yes, we're going to put that up there. The TS1 low video will be up for you guys on Patreon first. So it's going to be up there for you guys for a few days, and then we'll put it on YouTube. So you guys will have that before anyone else. As with a lot of the... Um, a lot of the... Uh, sneaker videos. Sorry, vlogs. Uh, all right, next up. My aunt, look at my aunt coming through. Solid listener of the show. Hey, fellas, great cast. Uh, the struggle is real for legal tender. Oh, I'm sorry. The struggle for the legal tender is real, but straight to, but stay true to your dreams. JJ, I know you don't know who Jackson Brown is, LOL. But like TTF said, great songs bring back meaningful memories. And The Pretender was still a, was and still is a classic. Take a listen, maybe, uh, maybe make a sound bite. And so Dow Pal... Uh, oh, maybe make a sound. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut this into a soundbite for you. I didn't have time this weekend. I didn't, okay. have, I didn't even have time to read these comments. So I'm going to cut some Jackson Brown into a soundbite for you. That's relevant for the show. I know exactly what she's talking about. Mm. Dow pal. So glad to hear you back or so glad to hear that you're planning on taking the leap from the job. 
Wow. Love listening to the cast on so many levels. Not a sneaker sneaker geek, but I find it interesting and love the sports and the guests are super cool too. Keep it up. Looking forward to number 87 and the upcoming merch. Also, Pierce Spectrum is the real deal and has helped me and my family, pets included, in so many ways. Nice. Keep on keeping on. Aunt Berta. Wow. Bang. <laughs> nice <Even> comment. <laughs> go. Coming through. Thank you, Aunt Berta. I appreciate you. I love you. I'll call you later on. Uh, Noble Music. Check out Dope Rope Co. Great dude, maybe willing to link up. All right. Thank you, bro. Cool. Appreciate it. Carlos Sanchez, that's for the sneaker or for the laces. Remember, I was talking about the laces last episode. That wasn't Norwal music? No, that was Noble. <laughs> oh. Wow. Uh, Carlos Sanchez, the Travis Scott highs does not come with the same label as the lows. I have both from the sneaker app, highs regular, lows new white label. Anyways, great cast. Guys, yes, I would, I would hit the, that's why I would hit the take that L on the way out for myself. I, uh, yeah, shit the bed there. Adidas got. Does Dallas have a mullet? If not, it really looks like you do, broski. Don't let other bros go mullet. <laughs> he definitely has a mullet. Oh, yeah. He's cutting that thing into an even deeper mullet. He's continuing the mullet. And then he's getting the Macho Man chalk line jacket. Hell <laughs> yeah. That's what we're doing around here. T-Mobile up next. Growing up, my family listened to Steve Miller Band on road trips, and hearing songs now bring back great memories. TTF, you couldn't be more correct about getting out and spending time with your kids and taking trips. It will be something they'll remember forever. As for the new sponsor, I can't agree more. Rejuvenator is clutch and always cleans the kicks awesome. I have all the products and clean... Uh, I have, have all the products and clean all my homies' shoes. You mentioned the metal brush is actually brass and works amazing on suede and nubuck. Dope, dude. I'm glad you've tried it out. I'm Hell looking yeah. forward to getting mine and checking it. Um, it will make them look brand new. Just make sure you go lightly with it and finish all going the same way. He's talking about brushing the suede or yep, nubuck on Which your I think is kind of what you said, yeah. Yep. Definitely works best like that. Lastly, glad to hear Dal is making the jump. I see only great things in the future for you dudes. My only worry is not being able to scoop up merchandise before it sells out. I'm sure it's going to be fire. Three fire emojis. Nice. T-Mobile. Appreciate you, dog. Yeah. Love it. All right. Uh, Juro style. Up next. Oh, for the oh, he gave me dude. Actually, Jerry Style. I don't want. I don't know if I want to read this all in the cast because it's like a ton of irrelevant shit that people won't care about. But it's great for me, and I really appreciate you. He's just giving us all the info about how to stream with a with a PC and stuff in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will react to this Jerry Style. The only thing I'm um we the only reason we weren't looking to go that route. I didn't want to have to put a PC in the studio. I wanted to be able to have this thing mobile. I don't want to have to have JJ out. Uh, off the set behind a control board running a TV production with a PC. So that is definitely like the more high end kind of, yeah. um, you know, with the processing power and all the stuff, yeah. the other way you can still achieve the same outcome and quality outcome. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather do the other way gotcha. instead of building or bringing JJ's high end PC here to try to run it live that way. How about we just, but I'm definitely going to check out. He gave me a links to a bunch of gamers and stuff Sick. that do shit live. And it just, just the setup. He said it looks dope. How about we just start off with some boosters down here in the studio? Yeah, we should start yeah. out with some boosters. Let's just start off with that. Let's get some boosters for sure. <laughs> Matt for sure. Mirren, another great cast boys. Just subbed out, just subbed to the Patreon. I have a week of vacation coming up at the end of September, and I was thinking about coming to Colorado. Any recommendations or where to stay or what to do? Mm. I would love to go to Red Rocks, that's for sure. Got Red to. Rocks, hands down. Yeah. Definitely got to check it out. I would go check out Lookout Mountain. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the closest drives for one of the sickest views yeah. that you can get. It's a very quick drive. So just, excuse me, look up Lookout Mountain cruise by you can go cruise some trails you can park at the uh, visitor center there and walk around up top in the trails you can drive around and just see all the stuff it's right by coors brewing company mm -hmm. if you want to go take a tour mm -hmm. of coors brewing company Love golden it. colorado yeah. only brewed with rocky mountain water are they sponsoring the cast Ooh. what is going on here uh so then I would definitely, I would say a Rockies game. I mentioned Coors Field earlier. Rockies would be nice. Yeah, that's a nice, nice venue. Uh, what do you got, Del? For me, um, obviously you probably like beers, like Coors, right? Or distilleries. So I would probably name some some restaurants, you know, because that's what Robin and I do. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, the restaurants and the drinking, that kind of stuff. So a restaurant, you got to do uh, Casa Bonita. <laughs> Because it tastes like shit. It's the worst thing ever, but it's made it on South Park. So you got to go to Casa Bonita. Uh, that being said, nice. uh, the Coors, Coors Brewery is awesome. Um, Shanahan, or Stranahan's. 
Distillery. So if you're looking for some good whiskey, Stranahan's is awesome. They do tours there. Great little facility. And then if you are downtown, you might hit 16th Street Mall. You know, so see some some of the bums, some of the street performers, and you got some nice little shops down there. Um, that's kind of you know where I'd start throw throw those out as well. Nice. Hopefully you have fun, man. Enjoy. Don't, it. don't go to bait and get some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Shaolin Kicks up next. Hey guys, love the podcast. TTF, I've been watching your YouTube way before the fire. I love the Travis Scott one low comparison. I was able to cop a pair off the sneakers app as well. My size 12 retail pair is great, except the Wings logo. Just like you said, the Air Jordan lettering on the top portion is all jacked up. Looks like J looks I. like an I, and the other letters are sloppy. Did you get the new explanation from the Stock X on the breach? I just received it yesterday on 8 9. Read it. It's pretty interesting. Keep up the amazing work, guys. Did get the uh, the stock X letter. Yeah, that's what they should have just done in the beginning. Yeah, I get that they were saying they're still trying to investigate and all this stuff, but this happened in May. Mess- investigation should have been done. Yeah, it was a cover up that you guys got called out on, and now you're being transparent. Yeah, that's what happened. And here's a years free of identity protection for you. Yes, that's right. Have Which nice- I think is right. They gave us something. Yeah, not credit like we wanted. Like everybody wanted credit. Yeah, for sure. Not getting even credit. Yeah, here, but you check out. But you, we can help you credit. Everybody was like, sure give them some fucking credit. Up. I mean, for real. Gosh, and they're satellites. like, how about some identity protection? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ramon Rodriguez, first time catching the cast, but longtime fan of TTF. Fairly new to podcasts due to the lengths. Love the vibe. Def going to listen and tune in. I appreciate it, man. The That's something I will say about podcasts in general. People get intimidated when they look at it and they see two hours. You don't have to consume it all at once. You can do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit. So people that are fairly new, maybe they need help with listening patterns because they just feel so overwhelmed. I don't have two hours. You have to give me two hours. You give me 20 minutes in the morning when you're in the shower. You give me 10 minutes while you're cooking up your eggs. You give me 20 minutes in the car on the way to work. You give me 20 minutes on the way home. Maybe yeah. you get a little listening on the way at uh, at lunch while you're out and running around. Like it just, it just plays when you have free time and you're by yourself and you don't want to just listen to your own thoughts in your head. You turn on the cast. And then you get, boom, before you know it, you're done with the episode. Yeah, it's the same thing we do with Stringer. Sometimes he's overwhelming. We have to have him hit a little bit, 30 minutes here in the morning. Then we have a little bit of 30 minutes in the evening. No big deal. <laughs> right. Then everything's okay. Yeah, the he just world gets too is cra- good. He talks too much. He goes too, way too crazy. <laughs> he's the goat. He, he knows everything. He can't the cast. He's smart. Uh, Landon, up next. Hell yeah, Dal. Full time podcast and fantasy show. Podcast and fantasy show. Merch two. Fire emoji. This shit is taking off. Wow. Appreciate it, bro. And then Black Prez finishes out first. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a few. That's a two in a row for him. Oh, I love awesome. Black Prez. Black Prez. All right. Um, you want to do underrated news? You got to go. We got to go. You got to go. All right. Let's, we got to get the hell out of here. Look for the uh, videos this week and uh, a lot of YouTube stuff dropping. Patreon members, a lot of stuff dropping for you guys as well. And as always, we will see you fools Friday.